Yes. So when you hit the subscribe button, then the notification bell, and then all videos. <laughs> yes. Do it. So even if you've already subscribed, you should unsubscribe, hit the notification bell, and all videos. Hello and welcome. This is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. This channel evaluates all aspects of true crime. As you are aware, videos and live streams in this genre often discuss elements of crime that may be disturbing to some viewers. If necessary, take the precautions needed to avoid these feelings. Factual information related to cases is the key to fostering rational true crime discussions. Fortunately, you will find that here. Please hit the like button only once, share the video, and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much for watching. Here's mosquitoes the size of bald eagles in that dead gum swamp. Five brain cells, four aren't working. Did you hear what I said? Have you lost the last three brain cells or do you just have cabbage for brains? Huh? What's going on, freaks? All right. Yeah, crazy stuff. Looks like we got a uh a trial date now in the Delphi case. Now there's probably people that show up but they won't be here tonight because it doesn't show Madeline Soto in the trial uh, in the title name so they won't um, they won't be here so there's really no point of doing a recap of the case. Uh, I think if you unless you've lived under a rock you probably have heard of the Delphi case with Abby and Libby in Delphi, Indiana, uh, February 13, 2017. They went out to go to a park at, <laughs> what's Blue doing? I went to a, like a hiking trail and, you know, somebody either stalked, uh, it was like stalking them and knew that they were going to be there or heard that they were going to be there or somebody was just hunting for a victim that day. And there's arguments to be made on both sides, but uh, Libby was fortunate enough, to, fortunate enough to film the person known as Bridge Guy coming towards them. And so there's a whole bunch of, uh, you know, there's information that we gotta discuss uh, today. But, you guys, this is like any other night out there. If you guys like to support the channel, it doesn't make any difference that we're covering Soto or Delphi. Delphi case is a case we've been covering for, I have anyways, for seven years on this channel uh, since the day they went missing. All right? So I would appreciate the support regardless of what case we're covering. So we're going to be doing the... Um, now I'm going to be trying to figure out a way to get there. Of course, they'll probably have me sit right next to the murder sheet or some shit like that. But I'm going to try to figure out a way to get there. All right. I've been covering it since the beginning. And I feel like I've got to be there for it. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, talk to people and you know, if I'm going to make my way out there, I'll probably fly if I go, but I'll have to figure out how to pack everything that I need into it. Hey, thank you, Wendy. Now, the phone number is not on right now, so don't bother dialing that. <laughs> it looks like my wife's moving around. Maybe I should get off the screen. Who knows if she even knows I'm live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Hey, thank you, Chris Cunningham. 
All right, so here is the news from today. This is on WTHR. It said the trial in the Delphi murder case has been moved up. The court reviewed Richard Allen's request for an early trial and accepted it. The jury trial will now take place May 13th through the 31st of uh, 2024. That's like two months from now. I mean, that's crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, that's just... The trial was previously scheduled to begin in October, on October 15th. Uh, so, you know, they'd moved it back because Rosie and Baldwin, who were rightfully removed from the case, got back, put back on the case. And I think they're trying to use that. They're trying to make it seem like the prosecution's trying to push back the time of the trial. But they've wanted this to go to trial for a long time. They are looking forward to taking this case to trial. They want to go there. They just want to get it in front of a jury. Quick. All right. Hey, thanks. Irene Cipher. So they want to get this case to trial. The delays have all been on the defense team, but guised as like the prosecution. Now, when you say they removed their, the attorneys and that made a delay, that what the delay part wasn't why they were, were, were removed, though. They were removed because they're piles of crap, okay? In my opinion, of course. The two attorneys for Richard Allen are, you know, based on the information that we've seen and they admitted to, are unethical and very... Um, I don't know what you call it. Uh, I mean, that's really the term. <laughs> you know, that's it, in my opinion, okay? Now, you might not think so, but if you're going to be sending documents to ex-cons, or actually convicts, like, you know, literal felons, and then discussing the case, even though you said you weren't going to, so to avoid a gag order being put in place, and then putting out a document that had all kinds of information that should never have been seen by the public, um, you know, uh, under the guise of accidentally uploading it to a server, you didn't realize that it was, um, you know, protected under the gag order. And then after that, the investigation in, then, then there was documents, or I guess you'd call them photographs released from that very same document were released to the public uh, the, of the crime scene of Abby and Libby on the ground and they're not alive in the image, okay? So they, uh, an investigation took place into those attorneys and it turns out that the leak came from their office from Westerman, a guy named Westerman, somebody that the murder sheet had interviewed previously. <laughs> I mean, amazing how the murder sheet was interviewing a person that nobody would really even connect to the Delphi case. And it turns out Westerman is somebody who was leaking very sensitive uh, information to different people out there. And isn't it amazing how the murder sheet seemed to have a lot of uh, sort of inside information from the defense team of stuff that was going on. I'm not saying they're the one they didn't put out. I, know, I don't. I know that they didn't put out the images of the crime scene, but I think that they actually had um, contact and communication with various people regarding the defense team. And if you notice, they've lost all of their connections after the crime scene photograph debacle where they turned in the information, uh, part, you know, one of the people that turned it in, the photographs to law enforcement, and then it all... The investigation then came back and led to the office of Baldwin, one of, one of Richard Allen's attorneys. And Westerman was a, I think Mitch Westerman, was a friend of Baldwin, used to work there. So they, they claimed that he went in there to visit one day and he walks into the conference room and lo and behold, there were crime scene photographs on a table and he thought that'd be a great time to take photographs of those images and then share them with uh, a person named Robert Fortson who then shared them with somebody named uh, Mark Cohen and then they were delivered to people out on the internet. Fortunately and amazingly those photographs still haven't made it sort of into the larger 
Delphi, you know, any community. They're just not available yet. I think that's an absolute miracle that somehow after all those people got these images, they didn't make it out. And so that was the story that was told, that Westerman somehow went into the office. Does anybody think that that would be, would you ever do that? Let me just ask anybody in here. Do you think that if you went to your friend's attorney's, let's say your buddy was an attorney, and you would go to the office and then start taking photographs of crime scene images and then release them somewhere? No, you wouldn't. So the reality here is that, this is what I think, this is what I think that the defense team, just like all the other times, planned on disseminating crime scene uh, information because they wanted to sell the narrative of the Odin theory. So they thought if people could see the branches laying on the two girls and that combined with their document, they'd go, oh my God, look, it's Odinous, it's Odinous. So they deployed Westerman throughout this case to give out sensitive information via Robert Fortson and then somebody else to get as far away from the defense team as possible. But when the investigation happened and it led back to Westerman and that's too close to the Baldwin's office. So they said, okay, listen, you're going to need to say that you came in and just took the photographs because here's the thing, everybody, we know that Baldwin and Rosie gave Westerman the Odin document with the attachments. Those are the photographs of the crime scenes. <laughs> and the thing is, is, those are the same images that were released. So there wouldn't be a reason that he would need to take photographs in the Baldwin's office, in Baldwin's office, because he already had the photographs. You get it? So I think it was just an orchestrated plot and plan by the defense team to put out a counter narrative using a friend of theirs. And then once, when it got turned around on them, Westerman had to bite the bullet. And he had to take blame and say that he did it on his own. He had nothing to do with it. And that is just using logic and reason right there. Okay? I don't care that under oath Westerman said, I went into the office and took photographs of these images. You know, if you believe that, I've got some swamp land to sell you. And you guys, we're starting off the show with a lull, so let's get moving here. We got to get going. Let's try to get to the goal tonight on the show. That'd be absolutely awesome. All right. So anyways, it says on here, the jury trial will now take place on May 13th 30 to, through the 31st, 2024. The trial was previously scheduled to begin October 15th. 13 News has learned jury selection will begin on May 13th. So how, who knows how long that will take? They're not, they're not even from Carroll County, uh, apparently like Allen County. The trial was previously scheduled to begin October 15th. Uh, 13 News has learned jury selection will begin on May 13th and will take place at the Allen County Courthouse. Once the jury from Allen County has been selected, the trial will shift to Carroll County for opening arguments and continue there through the verdict. Let's see, once the jury, oh yeah it is, Allen County has been selected. The trial will shift to Carroll County. So they're gonna select the jury in Allen County and then the trial will take place in Carroll County so they'll probably be put up in a hotel or something like that. It's a two hour drive. Yeah, well, and but here's the thing, everybody. They're still going to have the contempt hearing, like on March 18th or something. But I think there's no way that it can result in having them removed. I don't even know. I think the point of it now is just to show the public what the prosecution was dealing with. Because there's absolutely no way in hell that uh, Fran Gould can remove them at this point. Do you guys, uh, what do you guys think of that? I mean, it's like, if you remove them now, that would be just considered so biased. It would look like, oh yeah, you're removing them to delay the trial. So they don't want to do that. Right, hold on. Well, thanks Lillian. 
and thank you uh, Ember Maiden and Coffee Bean Queen and thanks uh, Eugenie on the uh, earlier show where you gave away five memberships appreciate that or the earlier video I put out wasn't really a show Uh, Indiana court rules require that a trial for a defendant held in jail on a pending charge be commenced no later than 70 calendar days from the date of the motion for an early trial. So yeah, once they put that motion in for an early trial, I think they thought the prosecution would push back and be like, uh, oh, well, no, we, 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 we can't do it. And no, they didn't want to do that. And there was another motion... Remember, the, I think there was a motion the other day to unseal the, like, Richard Allen's psychological uh, documents, which is, uh, I guess, underneath the, that is privileged information. And so what the prosecution is now going to do, because I, um, it's very possible that Richard Allen maybe said something, to one of the people that, uh, you know, like psychologists, for example. All right, well, that would be privileged information. So what's going to happen at trial is once Richard Allen, uh, and it was defense team, tries to discuss why he confessed because of psychological issues, that'll open the door for the prosecution to then bring in the... Um, other the psychologist or if there is something like that who he confessed to too okay <laughs> so I don't know though the defense might try to figure out a way where they don't have to maybe they just bring up uh, let's say the wife and mother and they they get up on the stand and they say yeah he told us this but boy he looks so disheveled Man, he looked like he was just really out of it. And just imply that and then not open the door to get the really damning information that they have. Hey, thanks, Sirius Black. Yeah, so the, the, the prosecution withdrew their motion to get the medical records. And I think the defense is a little bit stunned. They were like, oh my God, I thought they were gonna prolong all this and, and everything. They're probably a little bit bummed that the prosecution is really into having this trial in May. They've wanted this trial. Uh, you know, I know that they just wanna get in front of a jury. They wanna present the case. They've been ready to present the case for a long time. There's nothing new coming in. It is, the case has been over. The defense, despite all their little uh, comments they make to the public about how, um, oh man, they, do, they just don't have a case. They're, they're lying to you, okay? <laughs> they, the defense team, that's what they do. Let me ask you something. Do you think if you asked a defense attorney working on an active case and you said, hey, uh, Mr. Rosie, do you think um, they, they have a pretty good case against your client that Rosie would go, oh, God, oh, they have a hell of a case. We're going to have a tough time winning this sucker. Uh, we've really got to, uh, I mean, he's basically he's toast, but if we can kind of trick the jury somehow, we might be able to. Do you think they're actually going to say something like that? Hell no. They're going to say, we don't see it. We don't see a case at all. In the last 50 years, I haven't seen a case like this. You know, that's how they're going to sound. They do it every single time. There's, there's nothing new, but everybody that's the wacko community, including some YouTubers that switched over from the Summer Wells case, um, who are also conspiracy nutters like the rest of them, they, they will believe anything that the defense team is saying and trust it as like something really meaningful, like when the the ex-attorney, the one that was taken back off the case after being put on after Rosie and Baldwin were initially removed. So if you're, if you're just here, Baldwin and Rosie 
were removed from the case and then they were put back on after the Indiana Supreme Court ruled that Fran Gold should have had a hearing even though Fran Gold didn't have a hearing because she gave the two attorneys uh, the chance to um, resign for lack of a better term withdraw but resign sounds better you know when you you're allowed to resign instead of being fired and humiliated publicly that's exactly what she gave them a chance to do but unfortunately she should have uh, literally had that hearing and then when she removed them there would have been a different type of hearing with the Indiana Supreme Court they would have gone over that information instead they were looking more at like the Sixth Amendment and um, just her not having the hearing and so that they put those two attorneys back on and once they were put back on the two temporary attorneys were removed and then one of them goes on the television and says hey do you think uh, somebody asked him do you think he's guilty oh or innocent oh yes i do normally when i do cases i don't really you know uh, this is the first time i've ever felt like you know he's absolutely innocent oh, come on dude what else are you going to say? <laughs> you ask a, an attorney that was just removed, a defense attorney, one that wants to be hired again by other people. You ask him, and he's going to say out loud, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's guilty as hell. I'm glad I'm off that case, man. This is a no-win no situation. Uh, but, yes, my number is 1-800-HIRE-A-LAWYER. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to work. All right, so... <laughs> Yeah, I don't give a shit what their win record is. Uh, yeah, I, I do too. I think they need to. I, I don't think they're going to be removed. There's, I think there's virtually no chance that uh, they'll be removed. I think this is going to be a hearing so that the information is out there on the stuff that they were doing and more of a kind of like a political you know, jury sort of like, you know, they're going to hear, you know, people in the state of Indiana are going to hear about the shady tactics so that they'll be aware that, hey, you know, look out for this crap here. This, um, I think that's really what it's going to be for. That was that old one. Yeah. So I guess what we're going to, maybe tonight what we'll do is, since we're so slow, I'll see if I can get it back up. And get, so if you send in, if you do $5 or more, you get a spin at the wheel. Okay. We're going to go back to that. You guys are, it's, it's too difficult in here. And you win a, uh, a Chloe notebook. All right. You get a Chloe notebook if you win and that's only if we get to the goal if we don't get to the goal it just you know didn't get there coffee bean queen thank you and I'm filling out this form over here Ron Logan your bish all right there we go oh look at that Ashtastic, you get four. So this is just a giveaway here. Giveaway to the supporting freaks tonight. We'll see if I can get back to doing it again because it, it doesn't take too long just to highlight the name and put it in there. Thank you. Wait a second. <laughs> I'm trying to hold on a second. Somebody sent me some documents. Uh, 
I gotta, I gotta download this stuff here. Hold on. Yeah, Chloe's uh, still something doesn't look black anymore, but it's just still you can tell she's not feeling good. I just got a couple more things I got to read that were just sent to me. So what do you guys think? Are you guys excited about having the trial in May? I mean, it's weird. It just feels almost surreal. Like, oh my God, it's, is it actually going to happen? Hey, thanks, Courtney. I uh, took two weeks off. I took two weeks of what? Oh, you've already scheduled time off? You know, what I just, you know what I can't wait the most about? Is once the psychopath Richard Allen is, is convicted and put in jail for the rest of his life, if not the death penalty, that people are free to come forward and speak. Like, wouldn't it be great to have Becky and Mike and you know, just all of the people that have been trashed over by idiots like, uh, you know, Slow Joe and the rest of them? Ah, oh, gotta be. And I would just say, listen, just let it fly, baby. Let it fly. Because they haven't been able to say a damn thing to you wackos out there that are attacking the family over and over and over again for the last seven godforsaken years. Unbelievable. Disgusting people out there. And I'll tell you what, even if he's found, um, you know, if it's a hung jury or... He's found not guilty, whatever the hell it is. You guys are still pathetic piles of crap because they don't have anything to do with it, all right? So it doesn't even matter. <laughs> That's the crazy part. It doesn't even matter. You guys are pathetic wackos. Thank you, Courtney. Put that up on there, all right. Uh, if we recall the narrative that we've heard pretty consistently from the defense team, it's that they don't believe that the state has the evidence to convict Richard Allen. They do not believe that he is the perpetrator of the crime. Well, of course they're going to say that. <laughs> I mean, and so you certainly don't want to give them additional time to build a case against him. If the case, no, but the, the, the state has been done for a long time. They're not looking for more time to build a case. Allen has been in prison for more than 16 months. His attorneys have repeatedly said they believe Allen is innocent. Well, of course they repeatedly say that. What are they going to be saying? Well, I want to go, Billion. I gotta. I'm not gonna go there if I can't, like, you know, make sure that I have a place to sit in there, though. I mean, I guess it'd still be kind of cool to go there and be able to interview people right after each day. You know, maybe something like that. Uh, I don't know, but uh, they previously indicated plans to request a speedy trial as a legally a legal strategy to catch the Carroll County prosecutor off guard, but that strategy was was thwarted when Judge. Francis Gould kicked public defenders Brad Rosie and Andrew Baldwin off the case for alleged inappropriate conduct. Okay, so you see how they try to make it seem like that's the reason? 
You know, like, even these articles are unethical in the way they write this shit. Really? You really think that, uh, it, you know, <laughs> the speedy trial was intentionally thrown off because Fran Gohl removed them from the case? Or was it because of all the stuff that I just listed to you a minute ago? Hey, thanks, Ginger Keys. Put you up there. Man, remembering how to do this again. Thank you. Yeah, so if we get up to the, the goal tonight. We're not anywhere near it, right? Currently, we're about 20% down there at the bottom. Uh, then we'll do the spin. Uh, we got to get back to where even, like, <laughs> yeah, only covering the really big ones now, we get to the goal, and even then it's hard. Hey, thanks, Mark Willis. There we go. Awesome. Got you in there. And when you win the uh, notebook, you get the Chloe notebook. Looks like this. Hold on. See that? The Chloe notebook. <laughs> and then Chloe actually signs it with a paw print. And then you get the stress ball and the pens. Okay, so it's like a whole package. And I've got a few that I'm supposed to be sending out. I've been holding on to some for like two or three weeks. I like to have a bulk amount and then send them in. So there you go. Yep, you got yours. <laughs> yeah. The Indiana Supreme Court did not find evidence of such conduct. No, that's not what they said. They didn't say that. They didn't say that at all. They said that they should have had a hearing. See, see, this article isn't even accurate, right, you guys? Hey, thank you, Regina George. Do you think that this is accurate right here? The Indiana Supreme Court did not find evidence of such misconduct and reappointed the defense attorneys who have stated they do not believe Gould can be impartial and have requested for her to step down. That isn't what happened at all. You guys, remember it? God, what a, I mean, how come you're not getting this right, WTHR? That's not what they said. That's not what they said at all. They said that they sh there should have been a hearing where they were able to argue their points. That's it. Well, that's right. I have to bring that to trial. Uh, thank you, Amber Maiden and Catherine Andrews. I know, this is like totally bogus, this article right here. The defense team has informed the special judge in the case that it has turned over a witness exhibit list to the state ahead of Allen's trial. God, I wonder who those witnesses are. Let me guess, Julie Melvin, uh, Slow Joe, they're going to fly him in from Australia uh, with his white glove and his knife that he likes to talk about. Um, who the hell else? You know, some of these new YouTubers out there that are... You know, so slick and sleuthy. Oh, they got it all figured out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you, Kathy Chapin. All right. Yeah, feels good uh, filling up this uh, spin list again. May justice be served for liberty and have a go. Yeah, well, that's it, right? It's weird how all of this other crap, the shenanigans the defense team has pulled, it almost makes the Abing Libby aspect of the case like not even secondary. It's like this. It's, it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, there's victims here. The defense team and these crazy YouTubers out there have turned Richard Allen into the victim. You know, and, and there's people that believe this crap. They want to believe. They, I, here's the thing. I don't even know if they believe that there's Odinism. I believe that people want, love the Odinist thing because it gives them a lot of content. Now they have stuff to dig into. They can go over here and go over there. And even though it's all total 
bull crap. Sorry for cussing. <laughs> I didn't even cuss. Uh, what is it? That's the most vile part. Yeah, they like the... I mean, Abby and Libby... Uh, Libby was a... Like, I mean, I know about her more because Becky and Kelsey and there's a lot of people that speak of her. And we know about uh, Abby, you know, they, her and Libby played volleyball together. They were best friends. They did stuff together. And, you know, Libby was, like, smart and would defend people. And, you know, just, like, technically, like, the technical stuff is, like, Abby was really skinny and I think, you know, like, five, I don't know how tall she was, five, four, maybe. And Libby was, like, five, four, but she weighed, like, 200 pounds. And so there was maybe an attempt for, of her maybe to fight back at some point. Don't really know. Today I saw something where attorney said that Richard Allen's 5'6 and weighs 130 pounds. And I don't know about that. I think when you look at some of those pictures back in 2017, he looked like he probably weighed you know, 180. Um, you know, he looked five. He looks like he might be 5'6, but he does definitely look like he's more like 180, not uh, 130. You give me a break. You guys know which pictures I'm talking about, right? I mean, when he's hiking, I think he may have turned into, like I always say before, it's like Schmeagel from uh hey thanks pancakes from lord of the rings you know when you you get really um i don't know stressed out you know the weight of the case is sort of like the ring and, he, and he's just kind of withering away just living on borrowed time yeah he knew that he should have been arrested years before but he somehow Sl uh, you know, slip through the cla uh, cracks of the case. Yeah. Tur uh, Attorney David Hennessy is represented Rosie and Baldwin against the contempt charges. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing how the how it goes on the 18th. But I don't think Fran Golo is going to remove them. I think it would be if she removes them from the case, it will be. Uh, I, I, I don't even agree with it, okay, at this point. Even though I think her original decision was correct to remove them, I don't agree with it now because of the ramifications of it. Yeah, maybe you could do some sort of sanctions and, you know, refer them to the board at some point. Like, look at what these guys did, you know, after the case is over. I think that'd be good, you know, something good to do. It needs to be out there so that maybe even the Indiana Law Board looks at it and goes, ooh, yeah, wow, uh, that's uh, pretty unethical stuff right there. Yeah, poor, poor Richard Allen. Boy, poor Richard Allen. Yeah, these people out there, I I'm telling you. Richard Allen is the killer everybody richard allen is the killer for those just randomly showing up i'm gonna uh, bust through this again look at this right here there's a camera on this building richard allen told dan doolin in february of 2017 that he got there at 1 30 and he left at 3 30. lo and behold a camera right here sees a vehicle matching the black 2015 Ford Focus driving this direction at 127, and it he said he parked at the abandoned or like an old building. Later on, first he said the um, Water Bureau build, building or some shit like that. It's not a, that that building is in downtown Delphi over here. It has nothing to do with it. But he parked here, and then he said he walked from there to the Freedom Bridge, right? So once he gets to the Freedom Bridge, probably like 134 when he finally gets over here, and there were three girls, four in total, but three were witnesses right here. 
Uh, they took a picture at this bench at 126. They walked this direction. And as they walked this direction, they passed Richard Allen as he came in. They saw him, and he admits to seeing them. Right? So that means it's a confirmed sighting, and it happened at 127. The reason I'm uh, emphasizing that is because later on, when he was interviewed six years later, he has a confirmed lie under his belt when he told the investigators that he got there at 12 and he left at 1.30, completely taking him outside the range that he gave to Dan Doolin originally. So he um, gets there at 1.30 and he's entering in right here. He's walking this direction. Those three girls keep continue walking this direction. And then Richard Allen makes his way. It takes about 10 minutes. So 1.34, 1.44, he would get right here at the bridge and he's standing on platform one. So that's 144. At 146, an individual named um, Betsy Blair drove by right here, the one at one at uh, this uh, building right here with the camera, and then just prior to that, went underneath here and saw those same three girls walking across. She gets right here at 146, probably parks at 140. Six and so, you know, 30 or 147, let's say, gets out, and it takes six minutes to walk to the bridge from there. So she would have got here at 153. Uh, Richard Allen was here at 144. Had he walked this way after being on platform two, looking at fish, he said, he would have passed Betsy Blair on the trail, but he didn't. So she walks all the way to the bridge, and lo and behold, there he is. Richard Allen standing on platform one, exactly where he said he was standing. In uh, 2022, October 13th interview, he said he's standing on platform uh, one. Bessie Blair said she saw the individual standing on platform one. And her description, uh, clothing-wise, is the same as what he was wearing. Her memory of, like, the color of somebody's hair and stuff like that doesn't match him. But when she took a look at the image of the, pers the bridge guy, it's the same. She goes, yeah, that's the person. All right. Whoa, what the hell is that? This what afternoon that? we start with breaking news. We now know when oh, Richard Allen... Jesus. <laughs> that was just open. It started playing on its own. Yeah, and by the way, when you're helping support this channel here, I donate a large portion of the income at the end of the month. Yes, it also helps me, allows me to keep doing these shows every single night. But we're doing tonight, though, if you send in, you know, $5 or so, uh, for every $5 you get put in over here and I am doing a giveaway where I'll spin at the end and you can win the Chloe notebook, which is normally if you send me 30 on PayPal, you can order one of those. Uh, so that's, you know, pretty good value right there. Uh, bullying people. <laughs> where do we get these idiots that show up right here? Listen, you guys, you don't have to support my channel if you don't want to. I actively try to get people to do it because it's been amazing, all the stuff we've been able to do, and it allows me to make an income on YouTube, all right? There isn't ad revenue, very little ad revenue on live streams, and you guys are it, all right? So when we got these idiot trolls that show up, like this MS right here, whatever the hell their name is, um, you know, I don't know what to say to combat them, um, but you guys watch my shows, and I, this is what I do. <laughs> this is my show, you know. Uh, if you don't want to support it, then you don't want to support it. So anyways, uh, he gets here at about 144. Betsy Blair gets here at 153. So about, you know, nine minutes after Richard Allen got here looking at fish, she shows up. While she was walking this direction, though, Abby and Libby were dropped off at about, you know, let's just say 148 right here. 140, let's just say 149 since she drove by here. So Kelsey would have been here, dropped the girls off, drove by, and then 149 drives by right here. The two girls are dropped off right there, and they start walking down the trail. Betsy Blair, when she got here, immediately turned around, and then halfway back passes Abby and Libby. Well, guess what, everybody? The next person that Abby and Libby would run into would be Richard Allen, who's standing on platform one in this area. And it's likely, though, that when he saw them coming, he went this way to watch them from back here and then watched as they went onto the bridge 
and then there was a series of a couple photographs one taken about right there the second one at 207 this direction and then I would imagine when the girls got about right here he came out of those wo that wooded area you know still on the trail but comes out and really walks fast catches up to the girls on this side of the bridge uh, the video of him is at 213 so just six minutes after that one photograph of Abby and then they're told to go down the hill and they go across you know, down the hill right there, across this shallow area, and then likely probably up over here. Everyone likes to say this bank because it's a cliff, but it's really over here there isn't a cliff. It's just gradual rise here. And then this is where the crime scene is, right in there. And then apparently uh, Betsy Blair, almost exactly the same time that the girls filmed the killer at 2.13, or Libby did, Betsy Blair is getting back to her vehicle right here and she drives away, but on the way out, she sees a car parked at the abandoned CPS building right here. And she said it looked like a, uh, what the hell was that? There's three different cars that people describe, but they all have that same sort of flat back, straight down, like a back door, like a, and then a different, there was a smart car, and then a PT Cruiser and a Ford Focus. They're, they are similar in shape. Okay, if you go look at them. I know they don't look exactly the same, but when you look at the, uh, I'll show you in a second. All right, let's do it again. Purple P, uh, PT Cruiser. Did I spell that right? Yeah, see how that, that shape it has right there? How it goes down in the back, and then it goes like this, and then down. So you just, just think of that, all right? And then you look at a uh, 2015 Ford Focus. Let's see, let me get, to, I'm trying to get to the uh, side, let me do the side shot. Yeah, you see how that has that similar, it goes down in the back and then down and like this. So if you're just driving by really fast, you might see that and go, oh yeah, maybe it was a PT Cruiser. Yeah, you know, cause this isn't really the normal shape of cars. You know, uh, it's got that flat back. And then the other one was a uh, smart car. But obviously they all saw the same car, right? <laughs> Do you think that there was three cars that backed in? So look, so even this one has that same shape. So if you're driving by quick, you might have thought that's what it looked like. <laughs> you know, it sounds ludicrous, but I totally see it. Boom, straight across, down like that. So if you put them all together, they have that same general shape. And if you're driving by really quick, you just aren't really gonna and you're, you know, you're not told, hey, you gotta remember what that car looks like. That might be what your mind remembered, All right? But three different people saw a car backed in here at the abandoned CPS building, right? So do you, if, unless you think that three different cars backed in, then it has to be that they saw his car. Also, um, the only way that Richard Allen's story of getting there at noon can be true is this. It would mean that there are three other girls out there that passed him right here at noon when he got there, and those three girls have never come forward. And then it would also mean that when the other three girls got here, or four girls, they're walking, they're walking out, they passed a person in the exact same spot wearing exactly the same clothing. Wow, that's a miracle. I mean, it was a it was an absolute convention of Richard Allen's that day. Thanks, K. Me up there. I mean, it was almost like it was Halloween, and people were dressing up as Richard Allen. Yeah, well, I haven't got to that part yet. Then there's another person named Sarah Carbaugh, who apparently at 357 saw Richard Allen muddy and bloody walking this direction down the road All right yeah I don't even care about Sarah Carbaugh's observation it doesn't do anything it doesn't button up a timeline or do anything like that at all uh, to me he's locked in just in this whole situation right here and nobody else so when Betsy Blair remember I was saying how she was so Betsy Blair was here, and then I think she walked back up here, probably went to the Freedom Bridge, came back this direction, and went to her car and left. She didn't see 
the same guy that was standing on platform one, or, nor did she see any other males walking around. And that's because he's still over here. And that's where Abby and Libby were about to run into. And that's exactly where Richard Allen said he was. Those other three girls, the, four, the, the three girls that saw him, they were right here at 1243 and walked this way and didn't see anybody. So that means, well, if you got there at noon, for part of that time, those girls were there and they didn't see a soul until they got to the bridge over here when he was coming in at 1.30. You see, so those three girls are pretty important because they also verify that there was no other person there for at least 45 minutes of the time that Richard Allen claimed he was there in October of 2017. Huh? I don't know what you're talking about, Cindy. I've said that a hundred times on the show. All right, let's see. Uh... Yeah, yeah, don't forget, at the crime scene, they located a bullet, a full bullet that was ejected. So likely the sound that law enforcement heard when the girls were ordered down the hill. Uh, they know that they, there was a gun used because Abby said, is that a gun? He's got a gun. And then they hear like a little sound. And maybe that was him chambering the bullet into his P226 Sig Sauer gun. And then when he was at the crime scene, after he killed them, and he didn't need to use the gun anymore, he ejected it. You know that? So he probably ejected it at the crime scene when he realized that there were, um, after they were dead, he doesn't need the bullet anymore, so he ejects it, and then he couldn't find it amongst the leaves and the branches on the ground. Doesn't that make the most sense? But he probably thought, oh, that's okay. I mean, I didn't fire the gun bullet, so he didn't spend a lot of time looking for it. He didn't realize that you could maybe determine where the bullet was if it was ejected from a gun. You see? So, a, and then, after the arrest of Richard Allen and the, well, not the arrest, but when they did the search warrant at his house, they were able to retrieve the six hour, a six-hour handgun, that shoots the, I think it was 40 caliber bullet, and they tested it, and the ejection marks are the same. Now, some people don't like that type of, you know, science, and maybe they'll bring up experts to refute that or whatever, but it does place him at the scene, but I remember early on, I was thinking, man, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I mean, it is Richard Allen right there, All right? And then, let me just tell you this, you guys. All of the stuff that I'm telling you right now is exactly what they had before they even arrested him. Okay, and I think that was like the 28th or October 30th or, you know, somewhere later in the month. So they already had all this stuff then. And you don't think after that, once he was arrested and they get all this different warrants and everything and searching through things that they don't have an absolute treasure trove of other information. I think so. Yeah, we said that, Cindy. Yeah. All right, we're at, we're amongst uh, we got the K me up there, but we're in a mid uh, a lull again. It's two weeks going to be long enough? I don't know. It's, it feels like that's kind of a long time. I mean, what else are you going to... I don't really understand. To me, I mean, I don't know what the evidence they've got, which would take that much more time. I'm sure the crime scene images and, you know, the ME stuff will take a long time. I know that people don't believe that. I'm just saying, I just explained that. I said, 
some people don't believe in that uh, is a you know they'll bring a witness on that says that that's not an accurate way to do it mm -hmm. all right so anyways that's that now I'm gonna go back to something else so you remember yesterday I was mentioning you know fig solves I mean he has, he's, he's got a real name his name is out there now his name is Gary <laughs> which is funny right because that's what you guys people call me Gary and my diploma from college said Gary on it okay until I did a u-turn at the top of the stairs and turned around and had him change it all right Doop, Gilligan little bunny <laughs> Yep, Cindy's like Gilligan to me. It's just. So I'm going to read this letter that he sent. It's actually part of the Delphi documents now. Or at least the case against the. Um, the. the uh, Baldwin and Rosie. You know, it's for that hearing. Hey, welcome, Nevin. And hey, by the way, if you guys don't want to help support the channel, uh, like, you know, maybe you can buy memberships for people. That does help to support the channel too, but at least it's nice to uh, get a membership. I'll put that, your name in the spin too there, Mevin. It's the same. All right. Well, thanks for letting us know, Cheryl. We were all wondering. So this one says, my name is Gary, a resident of California, a small business owner. I am writing concerning the ongoing proceedings in the, in the above reference case. I have been falsely implicated by the defense, and I wish to clarify my stance and pre uh, present the truth. I must unequivocally state that I was not involved in any strategy to disseminate crime scene photos. Allegations suggesting my involvement are not only unfounded, but are a clear uh, diversionary tactic by the defense. Exactly. It is imperative to highlight that there has been acknowledgement from the defense side that leaks of crime scene photos originated with them. <laughs> yeah. See, isn't that funny? Like, they're trying to make it sound like somebody else did something, but they've already admitted that the leaks originated from them. And somebody even killed themselves over it. And that's something I forgot to mention earlier in the show, was that um, an individual, well, the Robert Fortson individual killed himself in the investigation into the leak, which is weird because he had said, hey, if I come forward, wouldn't this just solve everything? And then all of a sudden he dies of a, quote, suicide. You know, I mean, that's a little strange. Wait a second. All right. It's imperative to highlight that there has been acknowledgement from the defense side that the leaks of crime scene photos originated with their team. This campaign to associate me with their leaks, not just baseless, but maliciously intended to divert attention from their own admitted responsibility. The notion that I would engage in such deplorable tactics is not, is not only false, but deeply offensive. These allegations against me are a gross misrepresentation and an attempt to manipulate the narrative away from the factual origin of the leaks. To be clear, I maintain no inside connections or sources involved in the case, including but not limited to the prosecutor, law enforcement officials, or any personnel at the court, such as the Honorable Judge Goal. Additionally, I affirm that I have never attempted to undermine the legal process in any capacity. I wish to address specific points. <laughs> All right, here we go. I indeed contacted prosecutor Nick McClellan upon receiving unsolicited crime scene photos adhering to legal and ethical standards. Following his advice, I deleted these photos. This action was out of respect for the legal process and in no way indicates collusion with the prosecution. 
The claims suggesting that I have conspired with law enforcement are unfounded. My online interactions, especially those on YouTube, have been misinterpreted by individuals who have targeted me due to my support for the Indiana prosecutor, law enforcement, and the Honorable Judge Gould. I have solely expressed my personal opinion and categorically deny any involvement in misconduct. The allegations regarding my interactions Oh, hey, cool, Bridget. Bridget gifted a membership to Cheryl Crawford, and Mevin went to, I don't know. Oh, no, she just joined. <laughs> Never mind. Thanks, Bridget Malman. So, let's see. The allegations regarding my interactions with certain individuals online have been significantly misrepresented and possibly altered by the accusers or their associates. I wish to clarify that my uh, I wish to clarify that any of my actions which have been incorrectly interpreted as factual by witnesses are actually misrepresentations of the true circumstances. In reality, many of my online comments were made in defense against unwarranted harassment directed at me. These responses were never intended to influence the proceedings of the case or mislead any parties involved. They originated from a necessi uh, necessity to defend myself against unfounded accusations rather than from intention to alter or impact the legal process. Below is a link to a Google Drive folder compiled to document the behaviors of certain individuals mentioned in the witness list, which displays their physical threats, their willingness to alter or create communications and pass them off as authentic and will become obvious that the truth is that many of these individuals who claim to be witnesses actually were in communication with the defense. The evidence is provided. I am prepared to provide further evidence and clarification if needed or as needed. I will be continuously updating the folder with more and more proof as time permits. I respect the court's authority and the seriousness of these proceedings. I wish to express my concerns regarding unsubstantiated accusations made by defense and kindly request the court's assistance in addressing these matters to ensure a fair and just process. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Respectfully, Gary. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. All right. So then apparently after that, somebody else sent a letter in. Let's see. Hold on. But who's this from? Uh, somebody named Frank. Maybe that's Frank Meister. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, I, Frank Wesseling, solemnly swear that everything stated in this document is based on on the truth and nothing but the truth. I am writing to inform the court of my findings during investigative research in the Delphi case. In my capacity as an investigative podcaster focusing on legal and criminal investigations, I have uncovered and voluntarily provided the state with evidence concerning the recent leak of crime scene images pertaining to the tragic losses of Abigail Williams and Liberty Durham. Hey, thanks, Jay Case. All right. Do you want me to put you into the spin for the uh, notebook? How about I'll put you in there, and if you win, if you don't want it, you can, you can, um, you know, have me respin or something. Have you been getting your daily cardio workout in? It's very good for stress. <laughs> well, I do the walking. Yeah, I walk. Uh, like last week, I walked forty-two miles. Like six miles a day, pretty much. Wasn't that like, isn't that's not Frank Meister? I don't know. I don't watch the other YouTubers. I just hear of people. I, I really don't give two craps what anybody says on uh, the YouTube case, uh, on the Delphi case. I just know what I know, and I'm going to go with that. The, these other people, you know, <whistles> cuckoo. Hey, welcome, Lisa L. Haven't you been? I think you've been a member here before, though, haven't you? No, 
right, so here we go, here we go. Oops. Let me go back to that. I, I don't have any idea who these guys are. They're they're just all uh, dummies. <laughs> you know, the stuff that they put out, you just go, oh, Jesus, here we go. My aim was to shed light on severe implications of the YouTube content creator being actively involved in communications with defense, defendant's counsel. So let's see. This is regarding... Um, this is going to be regarding Fig Sols or, or Gary. Hey, cool. Look at that, Lisa. Gifted a membership to Sub Rosa. No, oh, that's who it is. Okay. I, I don't really care. But, but get rid of that comment there. I don't want to advertise piles of crap. All right. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. All right, so let's, let's do this again. I'm writing to inform the court my findings during... Hey, thanks, uh, Lisa L., for gifting a membership. Let me put that in there. Investigative research in the Delphi case. In my capacity as an investigative podcast focusing on legal and criminal investigations, I have uncovered and voluntarily provided the state with evidence concerning the recent leak of crime scene images pertaining to the tragic loss of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. My aim was to shed light on severe implications of YouTube content creators being actively involved in communications with the defendant's counsel, which was highlighted by the defense, defense's release of sensitive crime scene images. During my investigation, it became apparent that certain content creators have access to information not yet public, suggesting direct communication with the defendant's counsel. It became apparent that certain content creators have access to information not yet public. Okay, <laughs> this is awesome. Hey, thanks again, J. Case. Five members. Who got them? Two, three, four, five. We got uh, Keminoak, Gene Fish, been around a long time, BB88, Shelly Pink, and Amila Lavender. Well, thanks, Jay. Jeez, appreciate it. No, it's just, uh, I've just been doing this for, um, I've been covering true crime on videos and YouTube for 10 years and all kinds of different cases. So I'm, I've become, you know, I feel like I'm pretty good at figuring out what's going on in cases. And I've been covering this case since it happened and I've been making YouTube videos on cases since 2012 or 13. Uh, the Jody Arias case and then the McStay case and then it just kind of kept going on from there and man I've covered over I would say well over now what do you guys think like 1500 different cases at least and after a while you get pretty good at it I mean I've actually got emails from uh, people that were detectives and stuff and they go man you've kind of figured that out without it you know the same <laughs> it was it, you know nice emails let's just put it that way all right so yeah it's probably more than that because I mean there's some nights we would do six cases you know what happened uh, yeah I know Melvin we, we already know that we, we just figured that out a minute ago well don't type their names in if you're not promoting their channels I didn't ask you for the answer we already got the answer above yeah, and I, I don't want anybody running over to check some of these people out, <laughs> okay, because they are horrendous. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I, we, I take the facts that are available in the case, and I put them together, and I can just tell you over the years that when we do that, we are really close to what actually happened in the cases and we figure things out. Okay, that's it.
And I've actually had during cases, you know, three or four different cases I've covered where some law enforcement working on the case has contacted me uh, to try to get like, okay, hey, so what do you, th uh, you know, like, what, I, I can't remember what's the name, Chucking a Maddie, Maddie Bell. The sheriff in that one actually contacted me. And it was funny because his contacting me and giving me the scoop of the inside information, that's how I was able to say, oh, she left willingly with somebody. She wanted, he wanted me to get more information from the boyfriend. And I was like, after he, he explained the circumstances of it, I was just like, oh, she went willingly with whoever that was. And that's exactly what happened. Anyways, um, so let's get back to this one right here. I think it sucks that you guys even know who some of these people are. During my investigation, it became apparent that certain content creators have access to information not yet public suggesting direct communication with the defendant's counsel. You mean like Julie Melvin and uh, the murder sheet, etc. This discovery led me to provide the state with substantial evidence of external communication between these individuals and YouTubers. There is discernible pattern of efforts to undermine the state attributing it attributing to its conspiratorial behavior. There is a concernable pattern of efforts to undermine the state attributing to its uh, conspiratorial behavior. Hmm, not really sure what that means. Despite these individuals being active before Richard Allen's arrest, their inclusions on the defense counsel exhibit list suggests a reliance on unfounded conspiracies and rumors. I, I, well, I agree with that, I have to admit. I admit without, I agree with that one. I think the, the fact, here's all you gotta need to know. The fact that a guy named Slow Joe was listed on an a exhibit on the Odin document should let you guys know everything you need to know about the defense team. That guy is a pathetic, you know, worm. I don't even know what to say. He's a pathetic worm, and he is a, a billikin, as he likes to call everybody. A billikin. He's just a wacky... I mean, it's amazing. Just think how ridiculous that is. You got somebody out there. Hey, thank you, Mevin. Listen to me for a second. This guy named Slow Joe. Okay, uh, before that, uh, welcome to Beetle Beetle. I like that name. Uh, L. Pittock, Jamie J., David Hughes. Uh, he's a cousin of mine, or a half brother. Olden One, etc. Yeah, so Slow Joe did a whole video on this, everybody. Listen to this, everybody. This is the incredible sleuthing ability of this guy. There was a video that, uh, I think it was Renner, James Renner, a 360 degree video he did in Libby's room with Becky. And then at one time in the, when they were up there, Becky is folding a sweatshirt and knocks a book off the bed and then picks it up and says, hey, uh, James Renner, look at this. This is the book she was reading. And it was called Promise Not to Tell. And he did this whole video about how Becky intentionally slid the book off with the sweatshirt so that she could then have hand it to him. And I mean, that's the kind of crap we're talking about here. Uh, let me ask you this. Why didn't Becky just go, oh, by the way, this is the book that she was reading. You know what I'm saying? But instead he turned it into this huge thing and it, it's just, it's wild. And I guess she did a, an appraisal on the Flora Firehouse. She, there, are, there isn't a ton of appraisers that live in the area. So she did an appraisal on that house years, you know, sometime in the past. And somehow now that connects them to the Flora Fire. I mean, you people that believe this stuff are just as bad as the people that put it out. Right? So look in the mirror sometime when you realize that you're one of the people that went, wow, that's interesting. And it's not. Okay, let's see. Furthermore, I deliberately released correspondence okay, between, uh, between myself and Gary 
to observe whether it would provoke a predictable response from the defendant's counsel indicative of their broader strategy. Oh, wow. So this guy is um, like he was fishing to see if the defense counsel would bite at this. So that's pretty cool. I like that. So it says, furthermore, I deliberately released correspondence between myself and Gary Fixalves to observe whether it would provoke a predictable response from the defendant's counsel, meaning Rosie and Baldwin, in, uh, indicative of their broader strategy to misrep, uh, misinterpret the case and influence public opinion detrimentally. It is important to note that my communications with Mr. or with Gary were strictly based on the fallacy of the crime scene leak and the statement regarding Mr. or regarding Gary. Okay, let me read that again. It is important to note that my communications with Gary were strictly based on the fallacy of crime scene leak and the statement regarding Gary was taken out of context. So he's admitting that he took the uh, comment that Fig Sauls, a.k.a. Gary, out of context as sort of bait for the... And I don't think Gary, I don't think Gary knew about that, though. He should have let him, you know, in on it instead of having it come crashing down. I think that's, you know, I got to admit that that's kind of unethical right there, don't you think? A little bit. Just to, unless Gary knew about it, it's kind of bogus. You should have let him in on your strategy so he would be okay with any ramifications. Instead, now he's part of this. His name was publicly released. He wouldn't have wanted it out there. Hey, thanks again, Jay Case. Look at that. We got Michelle Mudd, Jessica Robert Shaw, Yodes Mania or Mania, Beryl Kubler, and Mace Windu. <laughs> hey, thanks. So what do you guys what do you think of that right there? Do you think it's so this guy was trying to trap you know, get the defense to bite on something. But don't you think it's a little unethical to not let Gary in on it? Because now he's part of something and his name is out there. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it was sort of a an interesting tactic, but I think it was just all for his podcast. You know, you know what I'm saying? It is important to note that my communications with Gary were strictly based on the fallacy of the crime scene leak and the statement regarding Gary was taken out of context. Gary was not aware of my intentions. There you go. It says it in the next sentence. Yet the outcome reaffirms the defense's apparent strategy to sway public perception and potentially taint a jury pool. So, I mean, I, while I kind of respect his overall attempt, you should have let Gary know that you were doing this because... I think it is sort of valuable to know that the, because this is what I've been telling you guys. Haven't I been saying this the whole time? That the defense team is intentionally leaking information to sell a narrative uh, to the public to try to change, and it's worked. It's actually worked because there's that many dumb people out there that actually believe this kind of stuff. And this is exactly what I've been saying. So this guy tried to like prove it somehow. My figures involved in these communications include the you know different podcasts here. Yeah, the, all of these are really unethical people up here. These individuals have had direct or indirect contact with opposing counsel, substantiated by evidence I have forwarded to the Indiana State Police, Jerry Holman. Nice. The purpose of this letter is not only to inform the court of these findings, but also to underscore the potential impact such actions may have on the integrity of judicial proceedings. <laughs> well, well, you were, you know, you were kind of having an impact on that yourself. You created this. Like this whole hearing, you know, this stuff right here for the defense wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for people like you. I trust this information will be considered with the seriousness it warrants, and I remain at the disposal of the court should further clarification or evidence be required. Respectfully, so-and-so. All right, anyways. 
There you go. Hey, thank you. Be kind and mindful. <laughs> and this, this is just, it's insane, you guys. Insanity. I just want to say boom by Birdie down there. Awesome. Does it, does the slow mode, yeah, the slow mode does not affect channel members, right? I think that's a cool perk, don't you think? Shouldn't channel members, the people who actually are supporting the channel, have first dibs on communicating if you do put it in slow mode? Wow, thanks again. Be kind and mindful. What was? Did you have a name before on here? Seems like it. Alley cat. Anyways, uh, I I know Fig Solves. I've talked to him on the phone. I don't know, probably half dozen times. He's a cool dude. You know, we have the same perspective. Um, on the case we we see what's really going on here we're not idiots like a lot of the people that are following the case I know that you well great just because they think differently does it well there's a certain point where you just are an idiot if you believe certain things okay like for example if you believe the Odin document when a guy named slow Joe is on one of the pages as a footnote there has to be something wrong with your brain. If you believe the Odin document, when a whole segment keeps saying, one man acting alone, using dexterity, would have to then pull an arm out of a sleeve. Then that single solitary man acting alone, using dexterity, would have to move the arm to the chest area. Then that man acting alone with dexterity would then have to... Oh my God, it was like a four-year-old wrote that one. Well, that's true, but I'm talking about the YouTube one, Cecil, not the one in the office. I mean, sorry, I didn't mean to cause any uproar in there. Gosh, Gray. Yeah, isn't that really ridiculous, Ethel? That whole thing about one single solitary man acting al alone using dexterity. By the way, did you guys see my... The version that I made using Mr. Rogers, it was awesome. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Well, thank you again. Uh, be kind and mindful. I'm trying to figure out. I want to play it again, you guys. Does anybody? Has anybody in here not see it? Seen it? Put a one if you have not seen my Mr. Rogers version of the uh, Odin document. Well, I know you have, Cindy. You have too, Cindy. You've seen it. I've played it like four times. All right, look at this. It's, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, you guys. It's only about six minutes long, so don't worry about it. Let's see, where is it? What would I have called it? It wasn't that long ago, right? Maybe it's a video, so that should be not too far down there. How long ago did I make that thing? <laughs> now I have to go find it. All right. Well, hmm. 
I do not know. I don't know when I made it. I don't, it wasn't a year ago for sure. It's got to be. Is anybody? I'm trying to find the damn thing. <laughs> Come on. Be kind and mindful. Don't worry. We'll get it. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I... I'm not absolutely sure I still have it up there. I think I was... Um, there might have been a time where I was trying to... like YouTube just freaks you out sometimes when they send you these emails about what you can post and stuff. And It could be that on that one... Let me see. I'll keep looking. It's possible... Hmm. that I may have uh, made it private or something like that. I don't know. I'll have to look for it. If, if anybody... See YouTube. They didn't take it down. I don't think they took down my my video. If they'd taken it down, I would have seen a... I would have got a message from them. I can't even find that. Let me Let me see if there's a way to filter this. Visibility. How about private? Maybe it's private. Let me just try to find it really fast. Wow. Okay, let me try unlisted. Hold on. Yeah, YouTube is, it's tough. It's tough out there. No? I don't know, you guys. I <laughs> I'd like to show it to you. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it on just somewhere else, like in a folder somewhere. I think I have the video, obviously, somewhere. Rogers. Oh wait, I see it. I saw something that said Mr. Rogers intro. So where the hell is that? Mr. Rogers. Oh no, that was okay. This might be it though. Let me see. Open file location. Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> I found the actual video on my folder. Here, watch this one. Here we go. Ah, here we go, everybody. Here we go. Life is hard. Life is difficult. But nothing is harder than this. This man acting alone. With dexterity opens a door to a quiet house. Almost too quiet if you catch my drift. Then this single solitary man waves as if to communicate with higher powers. We all know who those higher powers are. Then this single solitary man with extreme dexterity signals the higher powers yet again, using what vaguely resembles the ASL version of the letter F. Did you hear what I said? The letter F. <laughs> this man, acting alone, walks towards a conspicuous closet. Once at this conspicuous closet, incredibly with dexterity, he opens the closet door while simultaneously maneuvering his left hand and left arm out of the armhole of his jacket. <laughs> he then used his dexterity to pull the left arm through the left armhole. Once the left arm was successfully pulled through the left armhole of the jacket, the man acting alone would have used his dexterity to begin moving his right arm and then hand out of the right armhole of the jacket. Wow. Once this single solitary man removed his jacket, he then acting alone, using his dexterity grabs a hanger, not an ordinary hanger, but a wooden hanger that could resemble the Illuminati eye of Providence. Once this single solitary man <laughs> acting alone reveals the hanger, he, using his dexterity to cover up this symbol with his jacket, 
by first putting the hanger under the left shoulder of the jacket and then the under left shoulder of the jacket. He then, with the seemingly mythic Thor-like ability, hangs the jacket in the closet. Astonishingly, this single solitary man, acting alone, grabs what appears to be a tan sweater from the closet, only briefly revealing another triangle guised as a hanger. This single solitary man, using his dexterity, <laughs> shuts the closet door quickly with his left arm. Amazingly, as the door is shutting, this man acting alone maneuvered his right hand and right arm through the right armhole of the sweater. Then, as if he was a magician, acting alone, he behind his back maneuvers his left hand, then arm through the left armhole of the sweater. Then, in a move that only the Shaolin monks seem to have mastered, this man acting alone using both hands zipped the front of the sweater, tricking his would-be detractors who believed he would zip it all the way. Then this man, acting alone using his <laughs> left leg, first steps forward and it's begins an arduous good, trek to a bench, a seemingly short trip, but was anything but. Trust me. Amazingly, two Converse sneakers were placed intentionally on this bench prior to this man arriving. Then this single solitary man maneuvers his right leg over the top of his left leg. This man, then acting alone, quickly removes his right shoe and holds it up defiantly, but briefly. Once he has removed his right dress shoe, this man, using dexterity, grabs the right Converse sneaker that was conveniently placed on the bench and slides it on his right foot. Once the shoe is on his right foot, this single solitary man, using dexterity, ties the right shoelaces, securing the right Converse sneaker See to his right foot. <laughs> Then this single solitary man with dexterity maneuvers his left leg over the top of his right leg. This man, then acting alone, quickly removes his left dress shoe and tosses the left dress shoe to his left hand. Once his left dress shoe is removed, this man, using dexterity, grabs the left converse sneaker that was conveniently placed on the bench and slides it on his left foot. Once the left Converse sneaker is on his left foot, this single solitary <laughs> this is how they man describe using it dexterity in that stupid ties the left it's shoe laces, dumb. securing the left Converse sneaker to his left foot. Not one single solitary man could do this alone. Obviously, someone else was involved. There you go, everybody. Hold on. Uh, I'm trying to get these names in. Anyways, what do you guys think of that, huh? Not too bad. Not too bad. Hey, thanks up there to uh, Be Kind and Mindful, Peter Oom, mm, Norm Scanlon, and Cecil Hotel, and Jerry Walker. Very cool. Thank you. So anyways, didn't that sound crazy? But that's exactly how the Odin document described how Richard Allen at the crime scene would have had to remove clothing and different items off of Abby and Libby, but he described it like in such a slow manner. It's so ridiculous. You could make uh, toasting bread seem like the most difficult task in the history of mankind. When I woke up in the morning, I, acting alone, went into the kitchen and secured a slice of bread from a loaf. I then, acting alone, using my dexterity, took that single slice and put it in a toaster. Then, using the confidence that only a single solitary man would have, I waited for three to four minutes, anxiously awaiting as the toast then, I mean, you, man, you see what I'm saying though? It's so freaking ridiculous. Then with my right hand, using my dexterity, swipe some butter off of a... That's <laughs> ridiculous. Hey, welcome, M.M. Claire. 
Claire. Is that how you say it? Claire? Something? Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay, now that helps. Okay. Yeah, you got to admit, that is how they describe it in there. And they go through it 82 lines or some crap where they explain it just like that. Okay? Over and over and over again. Let's see. So let's open up the phone lines here, you guys. Why not, huh? Let's see if we can do it the same as last night. I think that was kind of fun. Oh, and listen, I have to say one thing to the Australian people out here is that I'm I apologize for uh, not covering the Samantha Murphy case. Because I was looking at that today, man, that looks like that would have, it was. It's really interesting, and it should have been. I should have been like covering it since the beginning. I know that people had mentioned it, but not really, you know, like, hey, great, no, really, you got to check this thing out. You know, I should have been covering that one. That one's pretty damn interesting, and uh, I feel bad because it's you know they've already arrested somebody. Maybe we could go over it from the beginning. I have a whole folder that I built up today when I was like, oh my god, this is crazy. Look at this shit. It's like a psycho. Yeah, you mentioned it to me. You didn't really say much like, you know, great, no, you really got to get this one. You know, I think we were kind of in the midst of, uh, I mean, there was, a, there was time where nothing was really happening, but they just made an arrest and it's some like 22 year old kid who apparently went to the, he was a student at the school that she was at a long time ago. I don't know if that's the connection, but he lived in the same area. And I don't know what the purpose was though. I mean, it's almost like he's a, like a serial killer type individual. You know, his dad is a, uh, an awesome uh, footy player too. So I don't know, man. We'll have to take a look at that. I've got, I'll, I'll just do it in order coming up here. That's right. Hey, look at Fig Saul said, use your dexterity dexterity, and hit that like button. All right. So, man, that's kind of bogus, uh, Fig Saul, that, that that guy didn't. Do uh, you believe his story, though? Like he really was trying to see what they would do with it? I think he's just that's sort of, um, I don't know, man. I'm not sure I believe that. I think it's bogus he didn't tell you, but I'm not sure I believe that that was his intention. He's just covering up what he did. I'm not sure. Well, thanks, uh, Wendy Van Rokel, that I have a, I'm clever and have a wicked sense of humor. And then up above we had, yes, now it's all coming together. No way you could do that. all that, Jerry Walker said, regarding the Mr. Rogers and Cecil Hotel said, so funny. Uh, Norm Scanlon said, brilliant. Uh, Peter, mm, be kind and mindful. Uh, I'm just reading back up during that. Well, you could call in if he wants to. Do you have time to call in, fix solves, or? I mean, I could get the phone number on the screen if you want to. Should have tagged me above for what? Oh, you want to, uh, yeah, maybe. That might be cool. I mean, I don't want you to, <laughs> you know. It was weird. Like, it was some big park. She was just jogging. She actually had jogged, like, seven miles or something before, and then she just disappears in some wacko. I mean, that's, that's like an, a, a U.S. kind of story there. Judge Gould was my aunt. And the idiots use that as if... It, I know, but don't you think he did too? And now he's just making an excuse? Don't you think? You want to call in? Might as well, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that'd be cool. 
Well, I don't want you going there by yourself. I mean, even though they've already got somebody, I, it just feels kind of weird at this point. Lake and what? What? All I'm saying for some of you, look a little deeper into the photo. What photo? What are you talking about, Mock? Nobody knows what you're saying. I mean, you just show up and you just type in one sentence. All I'm saying is some of you look deeper into the photo. Well, we don't know what photo you're talking about. I'm not psychic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got a lot of uh, dangerous. Uh, I'm going to lay low for another week. Then I'll do a victory tour. And okay. <laughs> well, I think you can. You should be able to say what you're. Just the basic information. I'll do a victory tour. <laughs> that's crazy. Anyways, I'm going to donate five memberships myself because that's what I do when I reach the three hundred dollar mark. So here we go. I'm going to open up the phone lines anyways, though, here in a minute. Because I want people to call in and let me know what you're thinking about all this. I think it's incredible. I'm happy that the trial is happening in May. I'm happy for the family. I'm happy for the prosecutors. I'm even happy for Richard Allen so he can get uh, get his, start serving his life sentence or you know start waiting on death row. I'm happy... For the defense, they got their wish for a speedy trial, even though I think they were trying to bluff the prosecution, because um, the prosecution's ready here. Oh, I get way more. I get way more trolls over here, Sarah, than uh, any any of you guys ever get. I can tell you that. I mean, my some nights are just troll central. Hey, thanks, Ashtastic. Now, let me open this up. The live stream. And then I'm going to... Yeah. All the ads that show up on my videos are like gaming apps. I mean, it's really... <laughs> do those do anything? Does anybody ever even click on them? Okay, here we go. And five memberships. That goes on top of uh, Jay Case's 10. And other, I think there's other individuals who donated memberships too. Here we go. Who's got them? Heather N, Anna, Jay Kells, Angela Alex, Miss Shay. There you go. And thank you, thanks again up there, Ashtastic. Let me guess, your name is Ashley and you're fantastic. Well, thank you. Who cares, Cindy? Jesus, man, we've already went over that. Why do you? Why does your brain keep wanting wanting to know about that stuff? All right, let's go. Uh, I'm gonna turn it on. Skype number. Turn down the music. Oh wait, I gotta get something set up on here first before I do that. Yeah, I'm doing. I try to. I put measures in to counter the trolls and track them when they call in. But I gotta get this set up. No, not that one.
Hmm. Oh, there we go. Got it. All right. Man, there's so many audio settings. Have you guys ever seen? Look how many you have for different apps that are on your computer. It's crazy. So I'm gonna turn this on. Okay. This is Gray. What's up, Gray? Who's this? This is Frank. Huh? I don't even know who you are. Part of deduction, the guy that you have been scolding. Okay. All right. Well, I don't want. I'm not really interested in talking to you. You sound like one of the crazy. I just the way you sounded when you called in right there is probably why I don't watch you. Okay. You don't have to watch me. Okay. See you later. Who's calling in? Anybody with a reasonable brain calling in? Yeah. I'm not really interested in that guy. <laughs> what a psycho. He's actually watching the show. Like, oh, oh, oh I, gotta, I gotta call in. Why don't you just do you, and I'll do me, and I'm not really interested in you. I think you're, what you tried to do in that case is ridiculous, all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's... Creepy. Can you say creepy? Gosh, Gray, I wanted to hear. <laughs> All right, let's see. Well, the... I think the lines are open here. We can just do them. I <laughs> know. That's what I'm saying. I always get the trolls, you know, the creepers, uh, the weirdos, the... You know, the, the people like that, that take somebody somebody else's comments, twists them around, and then sends them in somewhere, and then it creates a whole shitload of problems for people that didn't want to have their name out there. Right. That's great. Oh, yeah. Did you hear that weird voice that that guy had? Dude. Wow. Skype 18, yeah, so that's on there. Where the hell is it? Hmm. Uh, hold on, window capture. All right. <laughs> there we go. That's what I need right there. Awesome. Ready? Who's calling in about this case? Somebody with a rational mind. Anybody normal out there? Anybody at all? I don't know who he is, but I don't like the morals of what he, yeah, yeah. I don't need to know what he, who he is or anything. He sounds like somebody who goes out of their way to use people in a case to try to get some content for a podcast. You know, I'm not, I'm not interested in that. We just put out information that's being reported, synthesize it, put it together in a rational way, and, you know, using public tools are able to figure out stuff on your own to figure things out but you'll never see me do something like that I can tell you that I'll never manipulate what somebody said send it to somebody else to try to get somebody it's, it's ridiculous right so hey look at you guys you're, you're not calling in <laughs> what's going on let's go Tell me what you think about this stuff. The entire situation. Are you happy that the uh, case is going to be at trial coming up here relatively soon? 
Uh, Cindy, if you didn't pay attention, I'm not going over it again for you. I'm sorry. Man, you must have been difficult in school. Holy crap, your kids were probably knew exactly what you were talking about. But then you said, hey, uh, did you guys, under, you know, you were on a different path than your kids who actually were listening to you. Uh, the trial date is something like the 13th to the, what was it? It's a uh, two weeks, basically. Yeah, May 13th to uh, like the 28th or was it the 29th? I can't remember exactly. It was later. Starting then, though. Come on, Cindy. You know it. You know it. Yeah, I mean it sucks when you're you have to put some your name out there because somebody else. All right. Hello, who's this? This is Grace. Hey, Grace, Ivan. I guess I'll just break the ice here. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, just uh, wondering, do we think Richard Allen is uh, enough of a sociopath to take the uh, stand in his own defense? Like, what do you think he'd say? Well, I don't think he would. I don't think they'd allow him to. He's too dumb. It's like he just... I don't think he would be able to do it. I mean, I, there, it could be a point where he's just toast and it's a Hail Mary. Right? But well, uh, it, it, it's never good that, because once you go on the stand, if you don't, if you say something incriminating and then there happens to be another trial, you, pro you get to use that information, you know. But there might be a sleuthy, yeah, well, a, like a, a stealth crazy person there's so many of these wackos that believe the odinist stuff that they may may be on the jury and just believe anything that the defense puts out uh throwing logic aside and and, and god knows i'm ignorant but i never even heard the word odinist before this stupid trial you know before that stupid document got leaked uh and you know maybe i'm in the minority uh and other mm -hmm. people had but I hadn't even heard that silly explanation uh, or rationalization ever used, but like it just seems like you say hail mary. But do you think the do you think the prosecutor is going to use any not not, not 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 necessarily use your videos, but use your rationale with the timeline on the bridge? Like I hope so. <laughs> at that point, like what else does he have but to throw a hail mary? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, what I'm putting after he, he'll do the whole thing with here's the camera footage he'll they'll show i mean they're gonna have an amazing uh, i wish i was be able to help them put together the video in a way because i know what it what you have to do to get people to go oh wow you know they always do it in these ways that are it's too complex and too long-winded and by the time you're over people aren't remembering uh, unless you do a conclusion at the end but what you'd have is like Okay, look at here's the camera showing uh, Kelsey's car driving by at 149, and you know before that it'd be 127. This is the black, you know they have all these footage, the black Ford Focus, and everything, and, and mix that in, and then show now look at right after his car. See his car right here? It pulls around. He said he parked at an old building, and we know that he went right to the the um, yeah, Freedom Bridge, work. and then he. You know, it's just, I, it would be so easy to explain it to people, but sometimes these people the that put on trials, they make it too complex for people that just go, oh, shit, no, what, you know. See, yeah, when I do it, when... everything to be a Hallmark movie. You well, know, they well, want everything uh, yeah. to be a Dateline special. Like, when I'm done yeah. explaining this thing, most people, when they see it, they go, oh, God, man, yeah, no shit, he's, he's toast, right? <laughs> but... If you just read the document and stuff like that, like just wording, and you heard it here a little bit, you don't know. It doesn't make. It doesn't really. You don't. You're not able to picture how it makes sense. You got to see it. Hey, too. amen. Yeah. All right, freaks, come on, call in. It can't just be Ivan. I know you got your fingers on the dial tone. Go ahead and go ahead and hit that send button. Yeah. Come on, call in. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Ivan. Thanks for Have trying to stoke up some calls. <laughs> 
Yeah. Right. Come on, you guys. It's not hard. You just dial the numbers on the screen. It's not complex anymore. I made it really easy. Come on, you can do it. I do wish, though, that I could help make uh, a exhibits, because I know that I could make it where it would just be, you know, if they had just this portion here, I guarantee you I could make something that would be just absolutely undeniable. Hello, this is Gray. Who's this? Hi, Gray. This is Casanova. Maybe I should say I this. I talked to How you a this? long time ago. Should I say it like this when people call in? Should I say, welcome to the freak zone? Do you like that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, there we go. I'm switching to that. All right, what's up? <laughs> well, I'm just kind of freaked out that this is really going to trial. Yeah, it's weird. It's happening, finally. It, is there any chance they may... I'm I'm sorry, I'm getting a feedback, so if I sound weird... That's well, you have to turn off on, your... Uh, you can't use speakerphone. Well, I'm not. I'm not using speakerphone, but I'm not real up on using my phone so <laughs> oh, okay. um yeah i'm just i'm just on my phone calling you just kind of feeding back to me but um you know i've been with this case for a long long time since day one and it feels really good to think that they're going to go to trial but is there i guess my question is can they just back out of it again and the, the, the defense? I don't think so. I think yeah. once they put that motion for a speedy trial, I think it'd be... I mean, I guess, uh, maybe if extraordinary circumstances happen, they might be able to say, hey, you know what? We need more time because of X, Y, Z. You know, I don't. I think they can probably get out of it. But hopefully they don't. <laughs> you know? See, that's what kind of... Yeah. Is it really is happening? In my mind... Yeah. Is it really happening in May, right? I guess that's it. Yeah. Like they're kind of putting that, um, we want a speedy trial, and then putting delays out there. So, um, I mean, I hope it happens. I I just want the family to get some closure and some answers. I'm not sure we're going to ever get all the answers, but... Um, How long have uh, you been uh, following the case for... Pardon me? How long have you been following the case? Oh, for, I, see, I'm in Colorado, and when it hit the news, like the, the local news, mm -hmm. um, from then, from day one, and I, I had a conversation with you a long time ago, and you've had many, you won't remember. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah. I mean, I was just, it, it was like, at first I said, I think, that maybe some way or another, um, Ron Logan maybe have known but not know that he knew the people that were there because he just let everybody in on his property. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there was hunters coming in and all this and that. Um, I don't know. I'm, I kind of get lost in it all because I've been watching all of your shows and just taking everything in, but... Yeah, Ron Logan, really, uh, you know, he does. He's not the bridge guy, and I oh, would I, I would say there's <laughs> almost no chance in hell that he has anything to do with the case because the FBI, the Indiana State Police, they dug into him deeply, like they took everything and they looked at it, and he was he got sent to jail for two more year prison or whatever for two more years because he broke his parole violation. Exactly the reason why he lied about what he was doing because he knew that that was going to happen. So he they would have found something. You think Ron Logan is a genius technology or uh, wise and he, he would have just been able to hide every single bit of forensic? No way, man. Not not a chance in hell. Oh, so no, I totally agree. I totally agree with you. And I'm just, I get so aggravated when people just go back to that and they're just not looking at the... Yeah. 
the logical, and especially, you know, with you putting out the just the timeline and everything that you put out there, it's so clear. And I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what's wrong with people these days, I swear. It's crazy. But it's people want... I hope they go to trial. People always want there to be something else more, right? I mean, everybody's looking for... How can I make this more interesting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got Richard Allen. Okay. But if we all admit that it's Richard Allen and we see this evidence, we then we what do we have to talk about? Oh, wow. They introduced Odinism. Holy crap. Oh, wow. They put out the Ron Logan document. Holy crap. Now we have all kinds of stuff we can go into. Let's spend the next two months talking about Ron Logan. Then we'll switch over to the Odin documents. We'll, yeah, it just goes on and on and on I, and on. I, I've often thought that maybe he, because they said the crime scene was staged, that maybe he made it look that way. You know, he's out there doing yeah, whatever Rich, he's doing, Rich and Allen, he's yeah, I mean, trying he, to throw. Yeah, he throw he did. He, well, he did it. He maybe. he posed them. The you know he placed them apparently where they were found. That's what they said they were. At least Libby was dragged to where she was. I'm not sure if Abby was dragged, but you know Abby, when you know she was just on the ground, it looked like she may have. Even the document said the Odin document that she was still alive for a while because her hands were in a position like she was cold. You know how you, you know how you let you women sometimes when they have their sweatshirts on, they let their sleeves go past their fingers. You know. And then they curl their hands up inside that. That's how her hands were in that. And so it make that I don't think somebody would have posed her like that. I think that uh, that's something she probably did, which you know makes it more sad uh, the story. But that's why that shouldn't have been put out there by the defense team. No, no, it's so, and it's. I mean, it is just very, very sad and. Um, but I'm thinking, when they say the stage crime scene, maybe he threw the, you know, put the, placed sticks and whatever around to make it look like that. Maybe he had some kind of fixation with Odinism or something and tried to, I, I, who knows, it's just totally crazy. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a sad, sad case, and I just hope justice comes around and I'll keep watching keep supporting you oh yeah well and what, what, what's love, your name I think you I love you, what you do well thank you what what's your name Kathy my name is Kathy oh. but I'm uh, Casanova on oh Casanova on the chat okay cool not, <laughs> I don't get on on the chat because I don't know how <laughs> I'm on my phone and I can't get on the computer you know this we have a time change here, so... Well, let's try to figure it out right I now. I don't know. Let's try I'm to figure it out right now. Hey, everybody. When you're using your cell phone, how do you access the chat underneath the video? Anybody know? See, I can't see it because I'm sitting... Well, no, I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to... I'll, I'm I'll tell you. Uh, I'm um, electronically um, illiterate. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's that's see. The, that's the bottom line. Well, uh, Zozo is saying, I think it was really stupid that the police originally said that social media connection early wasn't a connection early on. And see, I don't know. They couldn't Me find too. one early on because um, they didn't make a connection with Keegan Klein directly. But then way after that, they got back their information from subpoenas to these foreign... Um, like websites and then they were able to be like whoa there's some communication and it still might not be uh, related but there was communication with a known catfishing account so maybe it was stupid you know now that you think back <laughs> you know I don't I don't know well great the first very first um, conversation I had with you and mm -hmm. you've talked to many and you've been through I, I don't expect you to remember but I said when I see that on my TV, I told my husband, when it comes down to it, they're going to, it's, it's all going to come together with that Snapchat. I mean, I'm not just, you know, saying I'm 
the right kind of person. Well, yeah, but, but we don't know now because right, the Snapchat was the Keegan that. Klein, but I was told that there's no connection between Keegan Klein and Richard Allen. I have a hard time believing that. I think there is there. I think there could be a connection, but they haven't been able to prove it or find it because it was like analog. Like somebody said, hey, there's these two girls that are going to be, but there was no digital communication. Here, let me see what it says there. It says slide wow. it over, slide it over. Now, what does that mean? A blank slate. And the next one says, my phone says live chat. So when you're watching it on YouTube, does it say live chat somewhere? And then you can click on that. I don't know. Well, I've been trying to figure it out, but right now I can't see my phone because I'm talking to you on it. No, but I'm I'm trying, I, I want to tell you phone, so that so. way before you, uh, so when you get off, you can try. We'll, 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 we'll look for your comment. So let's see. It says, okay. my phone says live chat. So people say it says live chat, like, is it under the video where it says live chat? Oh, it says live chat is on the, the left-hand side. Somebody typed in. Do you have an yeah. Apple or Samsung? Hello? Mm. Do you have an Apple phone or? A... Yeah, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. You yeah. know what, Gray? I'll try to figure it out. Well, no, but I'm you have saying... an Apple phone or just a regular Samsung phone? I have an Apple she has an Apple uh, phone, Apple. you guys. She has an Apple. Uh, okay. So I guess she just says, just slide it. Whatever. Okay. So I guess you take your finger and slide the video over to the left or something, maybe. I think that's what they're saying. Okay. When I'm looking at my screen, uh -huh. all I see are my icons. It says keypad, speaker, whatever. But like when you go into YouTube, though, right? When you're in the YouTube app. Maybe you can just, when you're watching the show on your phone, is that what you're watching on your phone? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I think you just kind of slide the, uh, he said, Mark Willis said, it's on the left-hand side, right next to comments, it says live chat. But somebody okay. else said you can slide it over. So just try a bunch of things, and we'll wait for you to comment in the comment section. Oh, wait. Uh, Zozo said okay. she'll send a screenshot right. over, and I'll put it on the screen. And then you can watch and, and see what it looks like, okay? So she's going to send me a screenshot. Okay. I'll put it on the screen, and then you can see that on the screen in a minute, and then try that, <laughs> all right? <laughs> we'll see if we can okay, get it. Okay, but Gray. Yeah? Gray. Yeah, yeah? I'm old. Hey, that's just a... I'm old. That's just in your mind. That's just in your mind. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but I hey, I'm ahead of my time, so I'm trying. <laughs> all right. Okay. All well, right. Well... Kathy, thanks for uh, calling in. We're going to go ahead and try to get you squared away here, though. All right. And you did you did send me a blue um, notepad. I got the blue, oh, the notepad. blue notepad. Oh yeah. I and people... I love and I love what you're doing. You just keep just keep doing it. You're awesome. Well, thank you. Keep putting the keep putting the messages out there because you're right on. Well, thanks. And what what's your YouTube okay. handle again? Say that again. Your name? Uh, Casanova. Casanova. Okay, Casanova. we're gonna we're gonna look for Casanova to be typing yeah. here in a minute. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm putting right. it up on the screen where where it is. So in a second. So watch the screen here in just a second. All right. All right. Well, thanks for calling okay. in. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> Bye. Right, bye. Right. So that's just what it looks like right here. This. Uh, just like that. Like here's the video, and then right below it, it looks like that. Is that what it looks like to everybody right there? I bet she doesn't use the app. Oh, yeah. Well, is it different if you go to YouTube? Maybe you need to put the uh, YouTube app, Casanova. So put the YouTube app on your phone if you don't have it. If that is what you're using, then it should look like this, where below the video it says live chat. Um, but... If you don't have the YouTube app, all you have to do is go to your Apple store, download the YouTube app, and then you just sign on like you would if you were on YouTube with the same sign on and everything. And there you go. You, then you start going to different channels, etc. Now, there you go. There you go. All right. 
So anybody else want to get in on the spin at the end? <clears throat> I'm already way over the goal, so. I have no app and mine looks just like that and I can chat. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Let's like let's look and see if we can see Casanova here. Link from X or other places it doesn't let me comment. Hmm. Thank you, Robin. Black instead of white is dark. Okay, so what we're talking about tonight, though, is just sort of what you th think about the trial happening in May now and all the other various stuff that we've talked about. I mean, we've talked about how the defense team has continually tried to uh, basically sabotage the case by putting out false narratives to sell a completely bogus story to the public, and it's worked. It's worked on, you know, news outlets. It's worked on the crazy morons that are on YouTube, etc. And everybody's out there uh, believing in a story that has no chance of being true. Okay, there isn't some Odinists out there. Uh, you know, the thing is, is you've got. I mean, there are Odinists people but they have nothing to do with the Delphi case. In fact, when you walk out there, the, the ground is covered with branches. They're all over the place. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the ones that give lawyers a bad name. Of course, if you're Richard Allen, you're happy with it. Ah, uh, Sylvia, your brain doesn't work correctly. Your, your brain doesn't work. I'm sorry. If I was an Odinist, I'd be like, what the F? They have a right to present their defense, everybody. I didn't hear all the other stuff they did, though. I mean, I know that you said that they... Oh, Jesus. Hey, everybody. Can everybody uh, put a one if I said the defense team doesn't have a right to present their defense? That's not what I said. Nobody said that at all. They invented... The Odinist crap, it's not real, it's fake, okay? Yeah, they looked into, into it at the beginning, but it was completely ruled out years ago. And yet, now it's being brought back by the crazy YouTubers who contacted the defense team, and they somehow believe that. They don't have a right to present bull crap, okay? And that's exactly what this is. <laughs> don't be a crazy moron, people, people. Well, oh, there you go. There you go. That's not nice, Gray. Just because somebody has a different opinion doesn't make them a moron, Jay. No, I, I know that. I admit freely that if people have a different opinion, they're not a moron. But if you believe that there's Odinists that, um, like, tried to pin a murder on Richard Allen years ago by leaving a bullet at the scene... Uh, knowing that somehow a guy named Richard Allen has a bullet similar to that, but we won't introduce the bullet or match it, match it for six years when we finally say, okay, it's the guy over there that we pinned it on, then you are a moron, okay? That's just the reality. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. They're only supposed to represent a theory that can be backed by evidence. Right. Well, they're going to say it's backed by evidence because a professor said, oh, yes. Here's how that probably went. The detectives went into the professor's office and showed them the pictures, and they said, now, we have these guys that seem to be into Odinists. Do you think that these markings here look like Odinist runes? And the guy went, oh, definitely, man. Oh, yeah, because he wants to be the guy that yeah, there's no way in hell you would. I've seen him. There's no way in hell that you would say those are, uh, without a doubt, Odinous runes. Okay. And thank you again, Ashtastic. <laughs> yeah. I use dark mode for everything. 
So now this professor has to explain why he said that. Now, I think if you ask him again, he might go, oh, I might have been a little overzealous here. I, I just was like really excited. And now that I look at it again, I, I don't see it. Okay. Did she make it in here? Uh, not yet. All right, the phone lines are open, everybody. Let's give a call in. We, I want to know what you think about this. The breaking news that there is now a trial date. I say, hallelujah. And guess what? You know what will be interesting, everybody? I'll be able to still do content on the internet because I don't just rely on the Delphi case. I like, uh, you know, covering the Delphi case over the years to try to add some reality to the case. But, you know, when the case is over, I'll be able to cover the same cases that I always have. Hey, 317, you're on. Hello, Gray. How are you tonight? Not too bad. How are you doing? Are you, you're in Indiana, right? I'm, yes, I am. Yes, I, um. Uh, I heard you ask someone earlier a little bit ago, how long have they been following this? Mm -hmm. um, well, I grew up in Logan Sport, lived there in Peru, and went to Purdue. So I went through Delphi hundreds of times. So I've been living it since the day afternoon of it that it happened, that started at least. Me too. So, I started covering it the night, big, the night they were missing and they were looking for them on Facebook. That's when I started covering it. Yeah. Or talking about it. I wasn't doing YouTube videos for it took me I think on the 22nd of February was my first video so that was nine days after the mm -hmm. murders so there were so few people covering it at the beginning and uh, I, I just have to say after watching all this for so long your timeline Nothing is smarter than the timeline that we're looking at, and I just hope that that really plays a role in just being smart about what really is going to come up with the trial, how they're going to make yeah. these things match. You know, you know I think like strategically what they're going to probably do is they're going to, you know, you're going to go through what happened to the girls, and then you're going to go through... Uh, this kind of stuff here might be I don't know when they'll, they'll introduce this stuff here because you might start uh, it, it's hard to say but there's a, there's a ton of circumstantial evidence which is circumstantial evidence is just as powerful as direct evidence everybody always think oh it's circumstantial sure circumstantial evidence is huge so they're going to have this whole timeline here that places him there then they'll probably do the Dan Doolin they'll have they'll interview him probably before this to get what uh, he remembers or what was said in the narrative and then it'll talk about the 130 to 330 and that he passed three girls etc then they'll go through this whole thing showing videotapes and everything like that then they'll talk about the bullet then they'll have I guarantee you they have a ton of other stuff text messages maybe maybe comments his daughter uh, said maybe people you know other people it's just gonna go on and on and on and they're gonna have just tons of stuff put together and, you know, the bullet is probably a pretty important element with the, you know, being ejected from his gun. But. I just really hope and feel that the, once the prosecution gets up there, they'll just, they'll just be vomiting out like. so much more <laughs> than what we know about, so, which is like basically what you just said. But yeah. So grew, growing up and living smack in the middle of that whole area, uh, I mean, I went to school with some of Bob Rosie's family um, <laughs> names will come up and I'll go oh god not somebody else I know of like Holder I have to admit for a long time I thought it was the clients I really did um, yeah so it was weird I never thought uh, I mean I was was a minute, but I never thought one of the clients the only client the father is the only one that was even remotely close looking but he was always too tall so it was always kind of strange. Yeah. It always seemed like it was just somebody connected to the Kleins after a while. But. Well, and I wondered about their 
well, I won't go into names, but some of their relatives that I know from uh, the Peru area and so forth. But mm. I, I just, my mind was going down that path, even if it wasn't them on site and committing a murder, that they were so deeply into it that there would just be no way around it, them not being, you know, uh, accessories or something. But I don't know. Um I'm just looking forward to things moving on finally. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. And I did I did want to um, mention that there is going to be a memorial walk for Libby and Abby on April 6th. Mm. And that information is going to be posted in many different places, the details on that. So um, it's always for people that are in the area and maybe not so much right in the area but want to it'll be a different vibe that's for sure than it has been before and because i've been on past ones where it just you know everybody was just i mean who's setting that one up who's setting it up um you know i will have to i'll have to let let you know i don't i just have been seeing the advertisements for it there's a web I mean, There's is it the from the, through the family, or who's doing it? A, yeah. The family has always participated in the ones I've gone to, and I believe this is, yes, I believe the family, I don't know that they're setting it up, but they're involved. Mm. I, I can send that info to you on the side here next day or two. Okay. But, oh, um, God. Man, my, I just went, <laughs> Man, I can't even burp. <laughs> that's so funny. I mean, that's the first time, I think yeah. I burp like once a year, but I just randomly burp and if i could ever figure out how i burp i would be able to burp all the time but it's such a shitty feeling not well to... i feel privileged that you burped while you were talking to me so. <laughs> that was <laughs> so weird laura. i'm just sitting there and went, oh and i went my wow. name is laura i would be jumping around doing jumping and... jacks of out of happiness because i never get to burp in real life <laughs> it's hilarious but uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> well, well one last thing i was out of state on business travel when the uh Richard Allen thing came to be, um, and I was just like mouth hanging open, you know, like who is this? And thinking about the dozens and dozens of times I'd been in that CVS. So it's just weird for all of us that live right around here, and we all have. Not everybody agrees. That's for sure. That is for sure. So good talking to you and. Um, yeah, you're Laura. I'll, you said your I'll name see Laura. that the information gets passed to you about the walk. Okay, thanks. Well, thanks for calling All in. All right. Laura? All right, good night. Good night, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Good night. Yeah, that was crazy, man. I, I, I mean, literally, I, I'd say I burp maybe twice a year. And that was the first time it actually, I, could, I was like, whoa, that's amazing. Are you still there? Or is this somebody else? Okay. That's somebody else. I need to uh, have her call in more often. Let's see. What, is this another one? Hello. Who's this? Oh, wait. Hold on. Freak Zone. Hello? Oh. Oh, yeah. We got the troll calling in again. They just finally go, oh, he's doing his show now? I got to call in. Yeah, you guys, it's a miracle that you guys get to burp. I've never been able to my whole life. Like, I can never go, oh, God. Bleh. You know, it's just, it's so rare. <laughs> Out of all those years, I was like the first burp that I've been doing this show. And it was weird because I, I had no control over it. It just sort of happened. You can't wink? Weird. Ding 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 You can go cross side. I think everybody can do that, right? We we are freaks. We are freaks. Yeah, I'm I for one let's do a polls now. How about that? What do we got? Our All 
All right, here we go. You can't cross your legs on the floor? Huh, what does that mean? I don't get it. <laughs> you mean like uh, one leg over the other? Uh, I don't know, I don't know what that means. I know people that can burp talk, you know, they're like, I am they're speaking burping. It's man, how do you do that? I can burp even when I don't have to burp. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's people who can do that. I can't even burp when I have to burp. You know, like I, I could pound down a, a Coke and just rip it down, and I would not be able to... Um, it, it just wouldn't matter. My stomach would just stick out like Santa Claus, and it just, it just sits there. I guess eventually it comes out, but... <laughs> That's when I get on my bike and don't even have to pedal. You just right down the road. Hey, thanks. Coastal Hampton style. Anyways, I got to try to, I got to get that. You're Australian, right? We got to do the, uh, that other, got to get that case. I was thinking, I don't know when I'll do it, but I've got a folder built up right now. That's a creepy one. What are they saying about this guy? Is he just some kind of like serial killer kid or was stalking the mom all those years? It's weird. I mean, she was just out for a run. It's almost similar. It's very similar to... You know, that one, at least few cases we've been doing recently where people are just out exercising. Haven't had a fever as an adult. Never had a TV. Never had a McDonald's. Oh, wow. You never eat at McDonald's your whole life, Jay? Come on. Not even when you were a kid. You know, you never had one of those... Uh, Well, does anybody else want to call in and uh, say your thoughts? So everyone's happy. So the people that said no, why aren't you happy that it's happening in two months? All right, here's another one. He had a girlfriend, huh? But what, why are they saying he did it? Was it a sexual thing or was there some other... And they must... they He took her from that park, too. And they haven't been able to find where she's located. They probably, I oh got. You guys have huge crocodiles over there. That's what I said, yeah. Her body hasn't been found. Uh, no burp syndrome. The psycho muscle gray. It's a thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, I trust you. You're an ICURN. Look at it. There's actually 10% of the people don't think they have any more information. Give me a break. Jesus, you guys. You have to be almost a lunatic to uh, believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 
They just quit searching after they did the probable cause document. They quit looking into the case. Hey, there's Sharon Gornick. How's it going? Oh, yeah, she always tells me to say, everybody, hit that like button, you guys. Hit that like button. It doesn't cost you a nickel to hit that freaking like button. And here we go. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. 10, 20, 25, 30. Hit that like button. 40. Do I hear 40, 45, 50, 55, 60? Do I hear 70, 75, 80, 85, 90? Hit that like button. Hit that like button. 30, 30, now 5, I'm 35. Man, that only, that only resulted in one. <laughs> that's pretty sad. That's that's sad. Well, Gray, everybody here already hit the like button, you bastard. Are those Bob Big Boys, Jay? 10% of the people in chat's brains don't work. That's what I, I agree. I agree. I agree doesn't make any sense. Gosh, Gray, why do you ask for an opinion if you're just going <laughs> to cut him down, you bastard? I I don't know. It's just to me it's like uh, it's a troll count number. Because I ask questions that for anybody with a rational mind there should be one answer to. Now, sometimes I ask ones that are, you know, it's really just kind of a an opinion opinion, but sometimes there aren't one. Oh, the uh, Burger King. Those are pretty good. I like the Whopper. Two all beef patty special sauce lettuce cheese. Wait, is that... Is that McDonald's? No, two all beef patty special sauce lettuce cheese pickles on a sesame seed bun. That's a Big Mac? Okay. To all beef, patty, but the sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, on a sesame seed bun. What was the one for uh, Burger King, though? That That's similar, like a Whopper, right? Yeah. To all beef, patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, on a sesame seed bun. There you go. That's right. That's right. That's right. I just said it right that time. To all beef, patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, on a sesame seed bun. Yeah, <laughs> I think everybody has the Les Schwab uh, commercials, right? It's all at the sign, the Les Schwab sign. Yeah, that's right, where's the beef? I never thought that shit was funny at all with that grandma with the where's the beef. I don't know what made people laugh or think that was even. I just kept looking at it like, okay, uh, you know, you got this lady saying where's the beef uh okay i'll tell you what's good though wendy's again you got to get the baconator okay baconator j case i'd like to see you order one of those Baconator. <laughs> There's no way you eat one of those. No, let's door dash him a Baconator from Wendy's. See, I knew it. I knew you wouldn't want one. Here's to more burps. Oh. I don't know how to do it. I can make the sound effect, but it's a house. Well, does anybody else want to call in and discuss? I mean, it's really nothing to like opine about or anything like that. It's just more of a like I'd like to know what you think about the trial coming up and what your general feelings are, etc. Yeah, he's in the U.S., yeah. K-9 
canned Wendy's chili. Yeah, it's pretty good their chili there. I remember that. next after this Tweety D and Tweedledum well they're gonna have the uh, the hearing where they go over and discuss their um, like you know the their bad behavior right it's the I'm not even sure what the point I mean the point of it now is just to get it out there to show the people what uh, scumbags they are and then at least that part will be out in the narrative that they'll try anything to get their client off and then that'll be part of the reverse story that people will know about and maybe not trust what they're saying because they're trying to make it look like the prosecution isn't trustworthy because they didn't uh, give them the name of the professor who said it was Odinism <laughs> isn't that crazy yeah pretty wild pretty wild Ding, 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 ding. Justice for Abby Livy, amen. That's a cat. <clears throat> Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce. Special order, don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us serve it. You know, <laughs> well, isn't that, I don't know if that's it. It's like, hold, hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special order, don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us serve it your way, have it your way. Yeah. Buy some Wendy's canned chili now. You know what I'm saying? Hey, by the way, you guys, you know the, the troll that's out there? Like, it doesn't bother me because it doesn't make any noise and stuff like that. But they've sat here and called this entire time over and over and over again. Is that hilarious? It doesn't, it doesn't affect anything because they don't make any noise and it's just way off to the side. But they just keep calling over and over Hundreds of calls. That's how bored these idiot losers are. Yeah. They're just dialing and dialing and dialing and dialing and dialing and over and over and over. And they think it's so cute and funny. Hey, everybody, listen. I, they're part of some Discord group. And they're so happy about how many times they've called over and over and over and over again. Canned bread. That's wild. I don't know. It's a, it's just it's a, a troll, Sylvia. What do you mean? Uh, why would I, uh, you say who's calling? I said a troll. I I don't know. Mm hmm Canned bread. Man, that's that's wild. Mm hmm You know, you guys want to see something weird, though? Like, uh, so look at this line that I have right here. Here's Richard Allen's house right here, right? So let me go like this. Put it right in his driveway. And guess where the other end of the line is? The other end of the line is on a cell tower right by Ron Logan's property right here. And you can see how the cell tower works. You know, 120, 120, 120, out like that. But then look where the look at this line goes over. Watch this. I mean, it just it actually goes over almost the exact spot where Abby's standing on the bridge. And so like if Richard Allen is if that's the only cell tower around and Richard Allen is here, I mean, he could claim that he wasn't right here. He could say, no, I was at my house, look. 
I mean, it's crazy, right? That is ridiculous right there. That it goes, I mean, literally in a line, like a... So he could say, well, yeah, my phone, if he, let's say he turned his phone on and it pinged here at noon, but they could rebut that. Let's say at noon, it looks like it's pinging here, but couldn't he say, unless the cell towers have distance on them, he could say, well, I was right here. Because it's freaking, it's like the same line, right? However, you could then argue it and say, well, no, because we know that you were there at 1.30 because of the three girls seeing you, etc. So we know that you weren't at home at that time, or you could have been home there at that time, but then later went to the bridge and you didn't have your phone on because we can prove that you were there. But you claimed while you were at the bridge that you were looking at fish and you turned your phone on. So he'd have to have something where if he got there at noon, that at 12.10, his phone pinged right in this area right here on the first platform because it takes 10 minutes to walk from the Freedom Bridge to right here. So that means at like 12.10, there should be some sort of activity on his phone accessing the stock market. Because he said he did that too. You know what I'm saying? Channel, second time I've been here, I thought you said that Steam, that you have a series of... I'm not sure what that means. I have a thousand videos on Delphi, happily. I mean, literally, like... Uh, I've been covering the Delphi case for seven years. So if you go into my uh, channel and just type in Delphi, there's, you know, millions of them. <laughs> um, I'd say we've probably covered... Hey, do you guys just get an ad right now? Because something popped up on my screen and said, Ad inserted. Did you just get one just now? Anybody? Somebody did, I bet. Uh, well, it said it inserted one. Maybe it's doing it for later. Oh, you got one, Zozo? Okay. Oh, and this account got one. So maybe not everybody. Okay. Strawberry Rain got one. Heather got one in Australia. Did it say, good eye, mate? No. Oh, when I was at the, when I took uh, Chloe to the uh, emergency room the other day, one of the ladies there was from Australia working there. And I said, oh, yeah, no, I've learned le words like servo and hafa. <laughs> and she's like, you know, whoopee ding or whatever. <laughs> she seemed like she had like half an accent, though. Like she tried to purposely not to have it. I can hear it, though, in some of the words. I think Chloe's doing better. Let's see. Wow. Is, is, what, is Blue, what's he doing there? Is he? <laughs> I mean, so that's Chloe back here. I can see her. She blends in with this pink stuff, but that's her hair right there. But look at Blue. Man, these, got, these dogs, man, I tell you what, they have such a miserable life. Absolutely put upon... Yeah, you can also just get like an app that blocks ads and you don't get them on YouTube. But YouTube starts making it so you can't watch videos unless you have it turned off. They just started doing that, so. Let's see, what does he got here? One, two, man, his heart rate's nice. His breathing rate's great now. It's probably like 25 or something. I mean, he's, he's so different lately. He's just running around, you know, just happy. Chloe, though, is, you know, we're probably going to take her into our local like vet tomorrow just to get her kind of checked in there. And 
And I wish they had done an x-ray though. They would they didn't do one at the emergency room, even twice. I should have insisted they did that, but she thinks it's just something wrong with her, her intestines. Everything checked out on the I don't know, we'll see. <clears throat> yeah, these blood tests, all that stuff. Yeah, I like the South uh, women's, like Georgia women's accents. That's pretty good. Let's see. No ads ever. <laughs> Look at Blue, man. He's just, he's got his eyes barely open, just hoping somebody maybe pulls a piece of chicken out he can get a little sighting of it he'll keep one eye open for a little morsel of meat he'll always have that eye open waiting watching wondering hoping <laughs> we're shipping these boxes off sending them to the Philippines actually there's four huge boxes of crap like not crap it's like clothing and stuff we don't use and you know sending it over there I mean like she buys stuff and then she doesn't wear it like ever <laughs> and I, I just keep saying put it in the box no I'm not gonna do it Hello. Wow. Those are the whoever got those beds. You're like uh, you're awesome. Okay. Because those those little paw beds are the most comfortable things in the world for them. They just crawl into those and just sort of fall in, and they don't even want to get up. Okay. Yeah, so Sharon Gornett said to click on the live chat for drop down to chat. Mm -hmm. But I guess if you don't see the live chat, you know, it's hard to click on. Oh, you don't use it? Uh, I don't know, Nikki. Uh, how come? Oh, Grady Judd, let's see. I, I have this whole press conference of, from Grady Judd that I wanted to play. Maybe I'll try to work something in the mind so, or something. So, just chill out. You know, drink a 7-Up, eat a moon pie, quit murdering people. I think I've heard that one. He said something similar before. Chill out, eat a moon pie, quit murdering people. <clears throat> so all the ones we have are these. This guy Maybe. may be like the, the dumbest, dumbest person, person on the face of the earth. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? Did you hear what I said? You know, that's just one step above stupid. Have you lost the last three brain cells, or do you just have cabbage for brains? There's mosquitoes the size of bald eagles in that dadgum swamp. Five brain cells, four aren't working. Well, there you go. There you go. I bet you Richard Allen played that music when he was drooling on his shirt. They're coming to take me away. <laughs> oh, ho, hee, hee, ha, ha, to the funny farm where life is. <laughs> okay, bye. Bitch, please. Dude. Oh, my God. Awkward. Drama. Hey, thanks, Matt is a cut snake. 
All right, you guys, I'm going to do the spin right now for all of the, this is a giveaway right now. Where is it? The Wheel of Names. It's been a while. It's been a while. All right. So here we go. Here comes the spin, everybody. Let me shuffle it. And I think a good music for this is the uh, this one. <laughs> Oh, you can't see it. Hold on. Look at that little that little lemon head dancing with it. Look at. It. <laughs> I like that. I like that thing. How do I get that? No. Mad as a cut snake. A canoe. A <laughs> All right, here we go. This is for the Chloe Notebook, everybody. The Chloe Notebook. Oh, this Ash Casket. And the very next one was going to be Be Kind and Mindful. It was right there. It almost slid over to that one. All right, so Ashtastic, you have to send me your an email with uh, your address on it, and then I'll send you the Chloe notebook. All right, and uh, thanks to everyone else who is supporting the channel tonight. I appreciate it. All right, very cool, very cool. I, I for one, am you know, after all these years, you know, I've uh, been friends with. Becky and Kelsey, I know Mike, but you know I, I don't talk to him. And um, yeah, I just feel so good that finally there's going to be some sort of resolution where they don't have to constantly just keep, you know, kind of having their life on hold a little bit to go to court and you know all these different hearings they got to go to. You know they got to go to this one coming up in a in a week from now. They got to go to all of the jury selections. They got to go to all the the trial. You know, and then if somehow it's a hung jury, then they got to do it again. But I mean, I just want it to be over with for them. I mean, seven years is way more than enough time. And it turns out this case should have been solved in the first two weeks, maybe the first month, if the information that was given to Dan Doolin had made it to the right people. Somehow it didn't make it to the right people and that one tip that they needed was right there in their system. I think it's amazing to me though, since he was in the system, that somebody after all those years early on didn't go back through all the tips again and read this narrative that said this guy said he was there and do something. So somebody dropped the ball here. I don't, you know, well, however you want to look at it. If he was in that system that the FBI created, somebody should have, when going through the case, like in these kind of cases like this, there should be somebody that's always assigned day in and day out to revisit every single um, lead that has come in and go back through them all, all the time. And if he did that, it should have led right back to um, Richard Allen almost immediately like 
I remember Robert Ives saying in the podcast we did, he goes, we thought having the voice in the video that it would just been a couple weeks and we would have made an arrest in this case. And guess what? That's probably how it should have been. Uh, but, you know, I don't, I still think that all the law enforcement, everybody worked hard. They worked their asses off for all these years. Just the right thing wasn't done to get that one lead. And it's a little bit weird, you know, disappointing, not weird, but just kind of like, you would think Dan Doolin over the years would have went like, God, you remember that one, that one guy, he said he was there from 1.30 to 3.30, you know? And just maybe bring it up to somebody again. But nope, that didn't happen. I mean, we, it's sort of like uh, we're doing the Monday morning uh, morning quarterbacking, but, you know, just given the fact that when they went, went and looked through an old tip narrative that led to him, that's strange, right? But I think, here's what I think. I think a there's a rumor out there that I think is true that a family member might be involved in the original tip, not the original tip, but the tip that came back in um, September of 2022. Okay, and you know, possibly if that's the daughter, then boy, isn't that interesting? Remember how there's a picture of the daughter on the bridge and another one on a bed where her face is down and she's wearing one of the Abby and Libby shirts. A little bit creepy, a little bit creepy, and she has a physical resemblance to Libby. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I think it's very possible that those rumors are, you know, true, uh, but it's, you know, it's definitely rumor stuff. You hear it all, all over the place. But we've actually been talking about the creepiness factor for since those images were released or actually when he was arrested and we found the pictures so that isn't so it's not shocking at all if that's true right okay so here we go thank you to uh, CJ's been a member for nine months Wendy Van Rokel said always look forward uh, for your coverage and Chris Cunningham, sup, gray and freaks. Irene Cipher saying, keep it up. Lisa Milliken as a new member. Amber Maiden said, I am so bummed the contempt hearing isn't televised. Yeah, it should be. But I think you can maybe get the, hopefully they put the transcript out. Coffee Bean Queen. Sirius Black. Ron Logan is not your bish. Alley Cake. Ashtastic. Courtney R. Let's go. Ginger Keys. Abby and Libby Justice, she said. Mark Willis said, look forward to seeing what happens to Richard Allen after he goes to prison. And Regina George with the clapping hands. Catherine Andrews. Amber Maiden said, great notebook for trial notes. There you go. Referring to the Chloe notebook, that if you send $30 to PayPal, you get the Chloe notebook, a stress ball, and a blue pen. Kathy Chapin, Kathy Frydenmaker, Alley Cake, Pancakes, k uh Mevin is a new member, and then Bridget Bauman gifted a membership. Wow, that's crazy. I just noticed that. So Bridget Bauman gifted a membership. Then Jay Case with a cat eye. What's up, Husey and Freaks? Hope all is well. Husey, have you been getting your daily cardio workout in? It's very good for stress, exertion to exhaustion. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been trying. Last week, uh, I think I walked something like, yeah, I try to do like 8,000 steps. So that's like, uh, turns out that's a ton of miles on the, the treadmill. It's like six miles or something. Five and a half, maybe. And I'm able to do it now. You know what's weird is if you don't walk all the time. Like I started playing golf with a cart. It was um, like your back starts hurting. But when you walk all the time, your back doesn't hurt anywhere near as much. It's strange. It's like it it fixes your back. Like if you, 
Um, I don't know how to explain it, really. It just seems like you're building muscles, just holding yourself up for that time and you're walking that your back sort of needs to feel good. So anyways, uh, then we had Lisa L. new member, then Lisa L. gifted a membership, then J. Case gifted five, then Lisa L. gifted a membership, then Nevin gifted five memberships. Wow, so that's 15, uh, or 11 so far they're gifted. Then Be Kind and Mindful. Then Birdie284 said, I just want to say boom. Then Be Kind and Mindful again. Then Alley Cat. Then Walker Homestead, 34 months. Thank you. And Be Kind and Mindful again. Then Be Kind and Mindful. And Peter Um And Norm Scanlon. Cecil Hotel, so funny. Oh, these are people super chatting when I played the uh, Mr. Rogers thing. So Norm Scanlon said, brilliant. Cecil Hotel said, so funny. Jerry Walker, yes, now it's all coming together. No way he could do that all alone, acting alone with dexterity. Then M.M. Cla Claire became a new member. Welcome. Wendy Van Rokel, Gray is clever and has a wicked sense of humor. Well, thank you. And then Ash Tastic with a dancing lemon. <laughs> then I gifted five memberships. Then Georgina Stoliker, Robin, Ash Tastic, Coastal Hampton Style, Laura Doom, Heather N., and then Matt is a cut snake. But all together we have 20, I'm not sure how that happened, but 28 new members tonight. I mean, I know that like. Well, Jay did two fives, didn't you? And then somebody else did five, and I did five, but that would be 20. But then there's eight more out there. Yeah, so Jay did 10, and then uh, then there's two. I did five, and then Mevin did five. And man, that's crazy. 28 new members. That's wild. That's absolutely wild, everybody. You think Rick wants to confess, but the lawyer wants money. Um, no, they're, they're trying to get a speedy trial. I don't know if they really want a speedy trial, but what they're trying to do is they're putting leverage on... See, they're asking for a speedy trial. That puts leverage um, or pressure on goal, goal not to remove them even after the hearing because it'll look like she's trying to, to delay again and not give Richard Allen his right to a speedy trial because then he'd have to have two new attorneys and then it would take a long time for them to get up to date, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So then they're saying we want a speedy trial so that puts pressure on her and if she keeps them in, then they can just say something else. Well, we give up our right to a speedy trial later. We gotta extend this sucker out. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see here. I guess in April we'll know if it's going to happen or not. Right? But anyways, thank you all very much for being here tonight. Thank you all for your generosity. Uh, appreciate it. You guys are freaking awesome. Uh, hopefully at the end of this month we'll be able to give one of our bigger months of donations to our various charities because I'm trying. I'm trying to... This month has been pretty good on the ad revenue for those videos that I put out. Not not incredible or anything like that, but one one video, that one video I put out did pretty well, and then some of the other ones have done okay. But uh, you know, it's just going to help a little bit at the end. Well, thanks, Strawberry Rain. <laughs> I've known Strawberry Rain since the Kanika Jenkins case. <laughs> that was that was in 2017, also. Uh, which which call, Sharon? I'm not sure which one you're talking about. What were they talking about? I don't remember any that were just like, I mean, I thought there, it was all good calls, but there wasn't one that was like long and deep into something. Did I see the prize wheel going on a couple minutes ago? Yep, you did, Plato. I I reinstated it. <laughs> I did the spin. 
Ashtastic one. I think. Wasn't that right? Yeah. I don't remember what the uh, what the last caller talked about. Oh, you mean? Oh yeah, yeah, I know which one. The one that we were trying to get to um, uh, Kathy, right? Yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Everyone loves the wheel spin. Okay, yeah, well, we'll definitely, I mean, it's just a giveaway for, you know, people who are helping support the channel, I might as well give away something. Um, I think so. I think I gave you a whole bunch of slices. I think I put gave you like 20 slices because of your gifted memberships. And if you won, you would have... Been able to give it away like you always do, but you didn't happen to win that one. I don't know if I gave you exactly 20, because a lot of times you're like, ah, just spin again, spin again. Mm -hmm. Came in to cheer, and everybody else that did the memberships I put on there too, even if they did one. What do you mean I always pass JK? What does that mean, Ginger? Nobody knows what that means. I always pass J case. What? Oh, you mean he always passes his win? You mean? Is that what you're saying? Oh, you got an ad. Huh? Yeah, it was Kathy, right? That was the last caller, I thought. Or was it the one? Oh, was that the one from the area that was... Um, I think... I think Sharon's behind. She's on Rewind or something like that. Yeah, I think it was the one that's from there. But I think she's listening to something that happened before, earlier. Because I wasn't really much, I wasn't really, you know, there's nothing earth shattering in that one. It was just kind of about a walk and, you know, when they were, you know, started looking at the case. Yeah, I think she's on uh, Rewind. Let me type it in. Hey, at Sharon. You are on Rewind. <laughs> Maybe she'll see that one. Huh? I don't even see anybody in here named Chick anything Chick-fil-A who's that I don't see anybody with that name and I'm on live chat so But why does it say Chick-fil-A hold the politics? I don't get it. I don't get that statement. It doesn't make sense. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I appreciate you being here tonight. I hope you found the show mildly enjoyable, <laughs> at least. I don't know. I mean, what did she say about it being in the area? I mean, we, we get callers all the time that are from there. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I'm not saying it was bad. I mean, I'm not sure what we have to defend the, you know, I'm just talking about, like, I don't think it was earth-shattering, like, information. There was no inside information or any anything extra. Nally Chili Mayo Fingers. Yeah. Anyways, thanks everybody for being here tonight. Thank you for all the uh, 
<laughs> your, your world was rocked. Okay. All right. Well, for you, it was the greatest thing you've ever heard in your life. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay. Anyways, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Who knows what tomorrow will offer. But don't be afraid to call the gray zone where the freaks reside. Maybe I'll call it the gray zone. Freak zone, great. Which one? Let me do a quick poll really fast. All right, let's do it. Start a poll. Uh, when callers call in, is it the gray zone freak? Zone. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Quick uh, poll. Hurry up. Bing, 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 bing. I like uh, I like freak zone too, though. You know, so. we're freaks, but who knows who's calling in? I mean, are you a freak? Or are you the gray zone is pretty cool because it's kind of like no man's land, right? Only wants Chick fil A on Sundays, not even kidding. Come on, Gray Zone. Hey, look at it, made it up there. All right. Yeah, but it's a place when they're calling in, not, so it's not really a matter. Oh, yeah. Anyways, all right, you guys. Thank you for being here tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. Next time you enter the gray zone. <laughs> all right, let's see. Next time you enter the gray zone. <laughs> that just reverses everything. All right. See you guys later. And be safe out there. Good yeah, night, everybody. I've been for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector. Like rejecta. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya. On a stretcher, if you try and play me like an old projector Crime sector is my nectar Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture Crime collector, freak connector And I'm always gonna be a pup protector Fool deflector, interceptor And I'm meaner than a specter with a vector On his pector, with all respect ya Just remember I've a temple fucking checkcha I have no agenda I'm the pretender, and I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Good night, everybody. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. Okay. Yeah, good night. Yeah. I said that, right? I know you said that. I'm just saying it again. Well, what would you say it? I said it already. But you're not me. I'm not you. No, you're not me. Oh, good night, everybody. Cheers. It's like who's on first almost, isn't it?